of trustees and the, a joint meeting with the Northfield Township Planning Commission to order. Uh, please stand for the invocation and the pledge. I don't think your mic's on. Invocation. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing everyone together tonight. And, you know, as we look to building the future of Northfield Township, Lord, just let us have, uh, have your will in mind for what you want for our community. We pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Please call the roll, Clerk Manley, for the Board of Trustees. Chick? Here. Shockley? Here. Manley? Here. Zelina? Present. Dockett? Wayne? Are you here? Yeah. <laughs> Dockett? Say here. One more time. Dockett, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. All right. I can hear you. Otto? Here. And Belliger? Not here. There um, she is. Belliger? Here she is. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And then um, Mr. Roman, our chairman of the Planning Commission, is going to call the roll for the Planning Commission. Thank you. Uh, Roman, present. Chick? Here. Kuzno? I Quinto is absent with notice. Infante? Present. Steffens? Here. Zarzecki? Here. Okay. Thank you, we have quorums of both uh, bodies. Um, now, you have a, an agenda before you. Can I have a motion to adopt the balance of the agenda? So move. Okay. Motion by Zelnock, support by Chick. Any discussion? Oh, I would like to add, um, before this, I would like to add at the bottom, number five, um, under the Board of Trustees agenda item, authorize the acceptance of the two outstanding easements for the non-motorized path if the offers are accepted. I have a question. Uh, yes, Mr. Dockett. Um, what? I can't follow my packet here very good. Uh, it looks like uh, number one, uh, it says North North Village Master Plan. I don't see that on my. I don't see that. I don't know which one is. There's two or three here. I can't figure out which one's which. The same as the concept plan. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, this this says uh, concept, but it doesn't say that on here. Okay. And there's another one here, the same thing, which uh, unless they're on the packet, I pretty hard to follow it. So, what's this memo? Which one is that? The memo's in the beginning for you to read, um, which introduces the three items that we have. Um, so for that's going to be joint number meeting. one. No, it's just a memo, Mr. Uh, Dockett, to let you know what the. Um, the topics were for the Planning Commission joint meeting. So, so number one is this? Yeah. Yes. Well, it doesn't say so on the, on my uh, packet. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dockett. Um, okay, so we have a, a motion to adopt the balance of the agenda uh, by Zelma. Well, I, I'd like to speak about this memo. Mr. Dockett, let's uh, have that at, um, it's not time for that. We'll do it at, uh, after board clarification. Is it gonna be during this meeting? Yes, it will. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion to adopt the balance of the agenda, um, motion by Zelnock and support by Chick. Uh, can we have a f the friendly amendment to add Number five, authorize the acceptance of the two outstanding easements for the non-motorized path if they're accepted. That's my motion. Okay. So we have support by Zelnock and Chick for that. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. 
All right, call to the public. We have an opportunity now to um, have members of the public come up and speak. Please state your name, your address, and uh, please share your thoughts with us. Try to keep it to three minutes, and we look forward to hearing from you. Mary Devlin, 9211 Brookside Drive. Looking at the agenda, you have the North Village concept plan presentation, the plan and design framework, and the proposed 2017 community development work plan. In looking at this, the only conclusion that anyone can arrive at is this will be, will be, and I say will very loudly, will be an exciting and positive time for this township. It's been a long time coming, but Northfield Township is finally going to move into the 21st century. The downtown will be like a magnet to draw in businesses, development, and very importantly, new residents. And that means a plus for our school district. I also want to mention that Howard worked very hard along with the board for this property. He had a vision for downtown as well as for the entire township. And lastly, I want to say kudos to all involved and two thumbs up for downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak at this time? Hello, David Gordon, 5558 Helena Road. Um, I'm also excited about tonight's Northfield Park presentation. The downtown planning group reached out to the community with a fun ribbon cutting ceremony at which they collected ideas from the public. They held an open workshop to collect ideas from those who could attend. Luckily, I was one of them. And they worked with our planners to distill everything that we're going to see tonight. I only wish this board operated in the same professional manner. I'm trying to get some clarity about how the board makes decisions. My comments are directed mostly to the trustees, not the supervisor, clerk, or treasurer. It seems to me, and from what I've read, a very smart guy once said, the best results are achieved through critical debate, self-reflection, fact-based analysis, and in public bodies, a welcoming attitude toward constructive modes of dissent. Unfortunately, what I find here is quite often the opposite. Advice from experts is only heeded when it agrees with the opinions already held and is otherwise ignored. Residents who come to speak or are at meetings or who write emails are ignored and dismissed because of, number one, according to Ms. Otto, our numbers are not significant enough to be taken into account. Number two, Trustee Chick said we are ill-informed don't really know what's best for the community, and we should let the trustees make these decisions. Ms. Otto, on several occasions, has uh, represented the dissenting opinion as a special interest group, and we're special, all right. We pay the bills around here. And Mr. Dock had admitted numerous times that he's already made up his mind and he isn't going to change. Um, Trustee Belliger, um, I believe is ill-advised and inexperienced, but that'll change. Um, are you surprised that so few residents show up at meetings? Given all your reasons for ignoring and disagreeing with the opinions that are expressed, why have a call to the public at all? Last meeting, the board voted to spend $75,000 to hire another manager, ignoring public input and without even doing a simple cost-benefit analysis. I feel that's ill-advised. There hasn't even been a discussion of the mistakes that may have been made by the last manager, unless, of course, everybody feels that he did a perfect job. And if you don't bring out the mistakes that were made, how are you going to avoid making them with the next manager? You're also now looking to spend $3 million on a sewer system. It's been discussed as something that's needed my mother taught me that what's needed is a lot different than what you want. Air, food, uh, you know, water, shelter, that's a need. Ten more seconds, mister. Northfield Park looks like a great plan, and from the PowerPoint that I looked at, there's a two million price tag, price tag on that. I encourage you board members to engage the public and respect us. Together we'll come up with better ideas and avoid more pitfalls. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak at this time? Okay, seeing no one. 
We have, um, of course, let's see, we've got board clarification. Do we have any, um, any board members who would like to speak to anything that they had heard? Ms. Otto. So I would like to clarify the comment that was made that the numbers are not significant. So the comment that I made was based on the numbers of people that, that did comment back, and this doesn't matter if they were a for or against a township manager, that's what David Gordon was referring to. There were close to, I would say, about 100 people that responded, either by email coming up to the podium, either for or against. Out of the 100, we have 4,600 voters uh, that voted in the presidential election out of 6,500 voters in, in Northville Township. That's less than 1%. 100 people are less than 1%. And what I meant is 1% is not something that I make a decision on. 99% of the people that did not comment, that is also a response. So while you think that 1% responded by emails, by coming up to the podium, by speaking out, the other 99% also made a choice not to comment and not to do anything about it. So that's a clarification. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on now to the joint session. And I'd like to um, acknowledge that we have the downtown planning group here tonight also. And so, um, and I'd like to thank them for the work that they've done on this. They've met month after month and have put in a lot of time. And um, I'll let you introduce them all. Uh, Barb, Barb Griffith is our chair of the downtown planning group and then she can introduce um, Mr. Lippens who's going to take over. Um, okay, we have Doug Wilbur, mm -hmm. Cindy and Jack Sechrist, um, Denise Kabish, Tim Seville, Linda Lupai, Tammy Menzel, and also our superintendent of public schools has attended several meetings. Um, and Jenny Olney, and am I missing anybody? I got her. Yeah, I got her. Um, anyway, just br very briefly, um, a lot of you were present when uh, several months ago the township manager asked for permission to start a downtown planning group. Mm -hmm. And the decision by the board at the time was to um, select people who aren't on a lot of other boards. So Howard and I talked to a lot of people and this wonderful cream of the crop came forward and these people have worked so hard and I think you're gonna be totally amazed what we did in nine months time Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to turn this over to Paul Lippens, who is the project manager from McKenna and Associates, and he will do the presentation tonight. I have some questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, <coughs> okay. I'm, I'm looking at this, and uh, there's 11 people on this board. Six of the 11, that's more than half, don't live in Northfield Township. Uh, I would, I mean, and they're about to spend $50 million. Who, who, who on the board does not live in Northfield, who are on the downtown planning group does not live in Northfield Township? Two. Okay. Uh, who's the two? Uh, Tom. Mm -hmm. Tom and Linda. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And they've been very active in our township. Doug Wilbur doesn't live in North Hill Township, does he? Business property. Mm -hmm. Resident, residence currently is just outside the township, but he has well, business that's property what I here. Say, yeah. I, and uh, what, what about uh, Tom, uh, what about this Tom? De Kaiser? Yeah. The superintendent of the Whitmore yeah. Lake Schools. I feel privileged that he was able to help us. And as Susan Bellor, was she, she's in York Town Chippers. Suzanne Bellor runs a business in town. Yeah, well, I mean, right. I, I just, these people are spending a lot of money in this town, or trying to, I hope they don't succeed. But I would like to see uh, more people on here that live here and pay taxes here. Okay. 
Thank you very much. I think we all pay taxes here. No, they don't. They don't pay taxes here because they don't live here. So how do they pay taxes here? Yeah. Almost everyone here is either a resident or a business owner or involved in the public schools here. Mm -hmm. I have a call to order, please. Uh, yeah. Back to the question. Yeah, uh, we the, would like uh, to actually have go forward with yeah. the presentation. And, and this group has really spent a lot of time. All of our businesses pay taxes to the township and even. They the do room. not. They I do. just told you about okay, four people that don't live here. We're going to move on with the presentation and uh, we'll let Mr. Lippins uh, speak. Now, right, there'll be question and answers after the presentation's over. So we're not going to take qu questions during the presentation because your, your questions may be answered further on in the presentation. So uh, we'll continue. I've got some handouts. Do you mind passing them down? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, hello, I'm Paul Lippins. I'm a urban designer and uh, transportation planner with McKenna Associates. It's been my privilege to work with the township on this project. Um, it's exciting. It's, uh, you know, we're looking at a property that's a great community resource. Um, it has everything you want for uh, public amenities, uh, the, the lake access, close proximity to downtown, and certainly a potential for um, catalyst for the type of quality of life that uh, township residents want. And um, as uh, Supervisor Chalkley said, um, I'm going to give a brief presentation. Um, we have time at the end for questions uh, for both Planning Commission and uh, the trustees. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and go through this pretty quickly. I did pass out for the trustees um, the, the pre printouts of the presentation I'm giving up here in case it would help anyone to see it um, right in front of you. Um, but uh, so we're presenting um, a plan, the North Village Master Plan, and uh, this was uh, the name given to the plan by the Downtown Planning Group. Um, it's for a property, um, formerly we were calling it North, uh, North Field Community Park. Uh, it may still be called that at some point or some part of it may be, um, but uh, I have a map here. And I'll be joined, just so you know, later. Uh, my colleague, Patrick Sloan, is on his way to the meeting. Um, to pr oh, he's here. Here you go. I was just going to say um, his second grade daughter had a flute recital. So he's been a good dad tonight. And he's here, which is great. Um, the agenda uh, tonight, I'm gonna, most of the time, I'm going to talk about the results from this planning study we did. Um, then I'm going to present the scope for the next phase of this, which is expanding to do a plan for uh, downtown Whitmore Lake. And then I'm going to actually turn it, off, uh, turn it over to Patrick, who's going to discuss the uh, broader uh, work plan for planning activities in the township, as um, Patrick is the uh, project manager for planning in the township. So um, the process and the concepts. Um, as I was mentioning, so this is the site, um, Barker Road, uh, Main Street, and it's bound by US 23 and uh, the railroad. Um, it has, it's 28 three acre site, so it's a very large property. Um, and it has uh, some, some fairly high quality natural features. Um, tree stands that are full grown, mature, and provide certainly an amenity that can be uh, featured and preserved in site development. Um, I mentioned the lake access and the rail corridor, but one of the key parts of this site, which isn't necessarily apparent when you're walking around town, is there are some very um, interesting strategic keyholes. So there's two access sites to Barker Road. There's one um, large access site to Main Street and then again, a second one on Main Street. And even when you go up to the north of the site, while it doesn't connect to Main Street again, um, there's, uh, as you know, MDOT is doing some work um, realigning the highway up there. And so there's potential for creating yet another northern connection off the site, um, which makes it a really a good site for connectivity, uh, both multimodal and um, vehicle connectivity. Um, So um, a little bit about the public engagement. You've heard from the downtown planning group. I think one of the things that makes this project um, really valuable is that it was born from public engagement. And I, I think that um, 
as Barb said, the downtown planning group uh, really is a, is, it's a group of existing residents, business owners, um, civic leaders that have come together, uh, have not been involved in a lot of previous uh, official roles in, in the township, although we do have some members of the Parks Committee and uh, um, members from School District and the DDA. So uh, there was some leadership involved in it, but uh, it was a creative process and this group really defined and led a, a process to engage the rest of the community. Um, but I want to describe some of the other things we did. Um, rather than doing a traditional market study, we did business interviews, and that was both uh, local businesses. We talked to um, about six local businesses that were selected um, with help from the township uh, and conducted interviews about what the, they wanted to see in the township, what was interesting, what the barriers have been to conducting profitable businesses, and where they see the downtown going, and how particularly this site, this opportunity, um, could benefit um, their businesses. Um, what we heard was that help uh, with events, uh, social media, and, and those types of supports from the township would be really useful. Um, that having lake access and public amenities so close to downtown would be a strength for downtown businesses and add value to um, those types of private uses that could um, be accessed during those special events or access when people were coming to the township to uh, do recreation. On, um, and then also that um, having a real, real public partnership and, and incubator uh, opportunities that were sponsored and um, focus on the township would help the business environment. Um, we also interviewed, I think we got in touch with three business owners that were outside of the township. Um, we talked to a fishing and recreation store in Depot Town. I believe we talked to a cafe in Dexter. Um, and this is detailed in the reports. But we asked some entrepreneurs that had had some success in other communities, what types of things would make them want to come to Whitmore Lake? and um, potentially open a, a franchise here. And uh, that conversation was uh, a way of involving the public in, in the process uh, through, through interviews. Um, it was mentioned that uh, part of this process was actually activating the site. So the Trunk or Treat event that happened in October uh, was an opportunity to actually uh, have an event on the site and uh, get a preview for what type of a resource this site could be in the future. Um, that event was uh, estimated, attended by between 500 and 800 people, um, and uh, one of, there was a big brainstorming activity, so it's hard to, for us to quantify how many people actually participated by offering ideas on that, because it was a board people could write on. But we also had um, a survey available there, and we got 92 filled out responses at that event, um, which is more than 10% of the attendees actually took the time to fill out a complete questionnaire. And um, for public uses, the, the top use that was um, noted was uh, beach or lake access. Um, and the top business that people wanted to see was a bakery or deli. Uh, similarly, we took that survey that we developed and it actually was mailed to uh, everyone in the township. And, um, we received back either through the mail or through dropping off of the township 390 responses at the time that this was uh, data was collected. We may have had a few come in since then, but we waited a long time, so I think we got most of them before we tallied. Um, top public use here, 63% uh, thought lake access was important, and 44% uh, thought a restaurant or a bar was the most important business use, and I know that the bakery deli was a close second to restaurant and bar. Um, but the, I think one of the most exciting things we did was this design workshop, and that would happen in this room in February. And uh, the design wor workshop, we uh, split up, we had three tables, and again, this was public-led activity, so it was designed to really put residents in the creative driver's seat about what types of things could be looked at on the site. Uh, one of the activities was designed to understand trade-offs, so um, Public amenities cost money, um, and uh, how could we potentially uh, create a tax positive uh, situation by combining some uses? Um, and um, that was an, an open discussion that was uh, certainly something that people had a, a good time talking about. 
although we noticed that it was hard to get consensus just by sitting around and talking about uh, something. And um, the second activity was uh, about connections. So we looked at the site and we wanted to evaluate how it connected to some of the neighborhoods around the township, how it would connect into the um, downtown, and what were the opportunities were to use the site to really enhance and um, uh, build on the strengths of the community. And then the final uh, uh, activity I call it programming, but that was actually looking specifically on the site and trying to imagine where different buildings would go, different uses. So um, if you wanted a, f a farmer's market or a community garden, um, if you wanted to see a, a restaurants, where you might actually imagine those things happening. Um, so I mentioned a little bit about the trade-off discussion. I think one of the things we found was that um, in having that discussion and seeing other people's perspective, um, people tended to change their minds. Uh, new ideas and solutions came out. And um, no, not for everybody, but for, for some people, um, it was an eye-opener as to how different site objectives could be met um, if you started to put more ideas on, on the table. Um, and we saw that in the connectivity exercise, um, which you know, point, pointed out the importance of the downtown area, um, potential to have multimodal connections to school sites and along streets, and then also identifying really that this is not the only opportunity site. It's not the only place that can be used to uh, enhance um, quality of life and business in, uh, in Whitmore Lake and Northfield Township. So we, we highlighted a, a number of other sites and other places where lake access could happen too. And then um, finally, when we looked at um, citing different activities, we asked our groups to actually imagine three different scenarios. So on one, a largely public only use, uh, so mostly public amenities. Second group looked at um, about a 50-50 mix. So if we were to add um, some limited housing development or limited retail. And then the third group was looked at a more intense level of development. And what I think was interesting is that in all three of these diagrams, um, the, there was a, a large public green and a, a town green entryway. And these features, even in the most intense um, levels of development, uh, were themes that carried through. Um, so what we, I think, realized in this is that, um, well, I think the preference for a development turned out to be more towards the, the low intensity or middle intensity for most people, um, that even if you got to higher intensity development, these public amenities and the, the basic design objectives for the township carried through all three. Um, there was no, um, no outcome that, uh, that lost, for instance, a town green or a large community park. Um, the idea of having a band shell, a pavilion, these things carried through. Um, so the fact that the site really uh, is intended to, to have a public purpose um, was a theme that went through and also a theme that we felt could be addressed in multiple de design scenarios. So in summary, um, we found that what we learned um, from residents and participants that um, it's very important that the site uses support the downtown amenities and existing downtown businesses. Um, we learned that the site, and I think everyone felt this um, in participating in the exercise, that it really could be a catalyst um, for connect connecting township assets and, and building on the downtown. This opportunity, I think, was felt as being very important from everyone that participated. Um, and then I think this event and, and parking issue in downtown the idea that this site could actually serve multiple um, opportunities in that way uh, to actually have events, provide parking for other events, events but also um, address a larger parking issue in downtown Whitmore Lake by providing some public parking. Um, and then, yeah, the, the, one of the takeaways, I think this, is, this came from the downtown planning group, but um, that you know, many participants went in thinking only about potential public uses for the site, but after the discussion, I think people left excited about possibilities. I don't think that it was entirely resolved, but I think people saw new opportunities from this event. And that was, I think, part of what made it a success. So we took what we learned um, at the event. Um, downtown planning group had a couple more sessions where we synthesized, discussed what we heard, 
uh, talked about um, what, what was the important outcomes and um, created, I think, probably the most important thing in the uh, planning document is a purpose statement and design objectives. Um, because when we start speaking to developers, um, if we ask developers to provide opinions, um, these statements uh, will be something for them to coalesce on and really understand um, what the township's looking for. So I think in the purpose statement, what I want to highlight, and I've, I've said this or alluded to it in presenting the results from the public workshop, but um, that the development needs to complement the historic architecture and the, the character of the village. It has to be in the appropriate scale, materials, and size. Um, that um, the development uh, can be phased, but that um, lake views, natural features, um, the parking, community amenities, and vitality, that that had to come first. It couldn't come, come after. Um, that the uses uh, needed to be complementary to the surrounding uh, township and to um, the downtown area, so it couldn't be a site on its own. It had to be connected and a part of the urban fabric. And um, I think per perhaps the most important that, um, you know, if private development isn't considered, that it should be considered only to the extent that it subsidized, subsidizes the public uses and the public amenities that residents want to see. In a sense, um, it can help foot the bill uh, to create uh, some of the things that residents really wanted to see on the site and thus address the um, design objectives. So that's a purpose statement. So that's an overall goal. So then we came up with some specific design objectives that in a number of ways, if you could, you could start from scratch you know, every day and probably design a different way that you could achieve these design objectives. But these are things that are actionable that can be achieved by the development of the site. And I'll just highlight a few because they're, um, they're in the plan, but you'll see, uh, you'll see in the synthesis plan that I'm about to show that, that it pictures ways of accomplishing these. So one of them is that you know, a town green, um, which uh, is focused or could be focused by some mixed use um, restaurant, cafe, um, bakery type buildings that front on Main Street and um, would be immediately adjacent to uh, lake access or public marina space, um, that a public stage or amphitheater or, or band shell would be included on the site um, for uh, public events, um, that there would be a, a larger uh, passive recreation space, a, a town um, a community <coughs> garden or, or lawn that could be used for you know, playing games or having picnics, um, and that um, some kind of a multimodal trailway connection uh, be created. And then finally, um, that public parking was addressed on the site. And then we have encouraged design objectives. And these are things that um, would be uh, considered but not necessarily um, required and developed. Um, one is that if housing is developed, um, that it uh, be used somewhat to uh, block and uh, buffer the highway. Um, and that there be some between uh, where you might have loft buffer that the, the other housing would be uh, more row houses or, or um, attached single family type housing that would uh, transition to downtown buildings. Um, and then uh, I guess the community garden and farmer market, those types of activities we put as optional as well. Um, so this is the plan. Um, this is uh, first I'll show overview and then I'm going to go into the to um, a zoom up that so we can look at some things but um, one of the things that I'll highlight is in all, in this plan we found ways to save the trees basically um, keep the strong site components that were there um, for the future um, the marina space uh, town green so this would be more of a, a place to toss a frisbee maybe you play soccer out here um, but we have a circulation system um, different loft size buildings and then, you know, row houses and then um, interesting, um, most of the mixed use buildings happen in this plan along, uh, along Main Street. So when you think about the use of this site as a park, um, you know, I think that more than 60% of this site we're retaining as a public park. And when you started looking at developing the site, if you, if you were to find opportunities to 
uh, put some taxable uses on the site, they could be uh, included around the edge in a way that respected both um, the natural features on the site, but ultimately really enhance residents' desires to uh, maintain most of this site as public space. Um, uh, so, so that's, I think, what you're seeing here. And as, as I mentioned, this is one iteration. Um, and really, it's a th synthesis plan to, to guide and encourage uh, developers to see how they could meet the objectives. Um, now, uh, it could also be something that the township could use and say, no, we really love this. We want to build just like this. Um, so it's good to have a visualization when you go into it. Um, just uh, blowing it up a little bit so everyone can see. I mentioned the town green, beach, marina, uh, central lawn areas. We have a pavilion down here. One of the things that came out of residents when we were talking to them was this idea that um, the band shell, if it were facing uh, the highway, um, Residents could look, but the noise would go towards the highway, so the noise wouldn't come out across the lake. Uh, I thought that was a really clever uh, idea. I don't remember who had it, but um, we jumped on it. And then I think the other thing that would be cool is that people could actually watch a performance here and you look to your right and look right out at the water, which I think would be nice. So we did a few um, uh, elevations to show what that might look like. So this one is looking uh, if you were sitting on the green, you can see the band shell over here. You look out to the right, you know, maybe there's a, a flagpole or some kind of a sculpture, and you're looking right out at the, at the water with some um, low-rise, mixed-use type buildings um, to go to a cafe or whatever businesses we can attract. And then this is more of a bird's eye view looking south the other way towards downtown showing that um, you know, in a loft type structure, you could get some uh, good articulated structure, have uh, porches, pitched roofs, um, matching architecture, architecture that's similar, uh, desirable to what you might have in uh, quality row houses. Now both of these look out on the green and would be you know, pretty desirable housing. Um, we presented a phasing plan so again, one of the things we mentioned, the objectives, is that really the purpose of doing this is to get the public uses. So we've provided a phasing plan that really requires all of that to be built in phase one. Um, and in phase one, we've also included the mixed use buildings um, to kind of enhance that connection to downtown. Uh, phase two, we're looking at additional public parking and possibly the first phases of housing uh, phase three, we've uh, suggested is this northern portion, where, which would be additional housing, which we think really is pivotal to uh, working out an access agreement with MDOT. We did meet with MDOT. This is uh, feasible, um, but I think these two things um, happen at the same time. So uh, we've kind of created this as our phase three long-term vision. Um, and one of the things about splitting potential new housing up into two phases means that uh, it gives the township time to evaluate how that first phase does, if it, if it works, um, and then you can look at the adding additional housing if it's, if it's working, if it's desirable, and if there's demand for it. So we did present um, a first phase uh, estimate at the uh, value that the um, site has created. Now this is uh, not separated into public and private per se. Um, what we did is we did a cost base analysis on how much it might cost to build these structures. But of course, um, you know, the, the public portion could actually potentially be paid for as part of a development package um, if some of the site uses were used for private. And um, one of the way, things that I think you could take away here is that, um, you know, 94% of the costs in this is actually for the private buildings, mixed-use buildings, loft buildings, and the uh, residential buildings. Um, that, I think, accounted for something around uh, 40, 43 of the uh, $47,000 million dollar estimate. Um, now, uh, developers you know, often are willing to pay 10 to 20 percent uh, of uh, site for land cost. Um, so 10 to 20 percent of that is four to eight million, which would more than uh, 
make the township enough money to, to build the rest of the site amenities um, with a land sale. Now, I'm not suggesting that that um, is the best way to do the deal. It's certainly not the only way to do the deal. I think uh, the township would be a partner and a um, planned unit development probably would make a lot of sense. But what this does show is that there is some um, potential to this idea, and it's the type of idea that you might benefit from having developers test. Um, and so we, one of the things we're looking tonight is um, to get some feedback on releasing an RFP to see with this vision um, what, uh, what developers might say about what could be achieved. Um, so again, yeah, this is this site plan that you're looking at, while it saves more than 70%, you know, 60% of the site for public uses, 93% of the value is, is also taxable. Um, and that meets one of the design objectives I mentioned previously. Um, so yes, I alluded to this. Next step. Um, so we would be looking for a resolution that would allow um, the downtown planning group or the DDA as its proxy or potentially the township to release an RFP and essentially say, we have uh, this vision plan uh, for North Village. Um, we would like uh, to see what developers have to say and, and take proposals for site development. Um, and I think that that is a good next step. Um, following that, uh, we would issue the RFP and, and see what the responses were. Um, the next phase from a policy perspective would be to incorporate the results of this plan into um, the downtown plan, uh, incorporate it into the parks plan at some point uh, because of course there's public amenities included and then um, also incorporating into the next township master plan. Um, I think both redevelopment ready communities program and um, potential MEDC and MDNR funding um, would support uh, the concepts uh, presented in this plan. Uh, but then the other thing that, the point that I'd like to make is that the plan that we've presented tonight is consistent with the current master plan for the township and the current zoning for this site. Um, so it is a plan that's been prepared consistent with the township's policy um, since the last time they did the master plan. Um, and, you know, it could, it could be adopted um, as is. Um, but, but as I mentioned, I think the, the goal is to incorporate this into the next phase of downtown planning um, and continue essentially to workshop and work on the ideas. Um, okay. So that's my presentation. Uh, we have a few more items on the agenda um, to discuss, but that's even moving forward. I wanted to pause here and provide an opportunity for comment and questions and discussion. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Do we have any uh, board members or planning commission members? Um, Ms. Chick. Uh, could you explain what the RFP process is? <clears throat> How do you get that out to, to developers? Sorry. Um, <coughs> well, we would, uh, I think this could probably be a pretty simple RFP. I mean, one or two pages. We're referencing a plan. So a lot of the information that we want to be considered is actually in, in the plan that you're looking at tonight. Um, so it would just be a matter of preparing the document and then we would look to uh, probably issue a memo and ask for uh, board approval to release it. Um, I don't know if it's been determined yet whether it will be released by the DDA or if it will be released by the township. Um, but when that decision is made, we just uh, put it on, on the website and release uh, a press release and, and wait. We could put it on Mitten too, um, mm. but there's many places where we, we could actually put it on the Michigan Association for Planning. Um, it's, it's a fairly simple project, and what, what we really need is, is um, support to do it. Um, but I'm confident we could get it done in two to three weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe the redevelopment ready uh, communities, um, that, that whole, they'll take one site from our township, even though we're not certified, and they'll put it in their book. So that might be very helpful. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, any other, uh, Ms. Otto? And on a couple of these um, mixed-use buildings on Maine, would those be to where a developer would actually have to purchase that area to develop? Um, so 
it could, there are a number of ways to do it, right? The township could retain ownership and they could do a, a long-term land use, lease um, or they could, uh, the whole site could be a PUD and part of the public areas could be um, basically provided back to the township with public easements. Um, but these, these, or it could be, as, as you said, it could be uh, split into parcels and developed separately. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more, but um, I think that that question is something that would be really dependent largely on what the township's preference was and then what came back from a developer proposal, because that will be part of the fee structure that you'd review is who retains ownership and what the, the ownership status would be for the individual per portions. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Ms. Bellager. Um, I'm kind of curious, I'd like to know a little bit about the residential ideas for this space here. Uh, my concern is I, I think it would be beneficial for the township as a whole if the residential um, units are actually um, resident owned as opposed to rentals. I would like to stay away from the rentals. I want to see people have skin in the game but I don't want a transient community developing and whatnot in the area. So I'm very concerned, and you mentioned lofts. I don't know if lofts would be like condos, something that an individual could purchase and as a residence. Mm -hmm. Yes, a so Thanks. lofts can be done as condos and certainly row houses can be done as condos. Um, again, I think that that structure would be part of the development package. Um, you know, it, it might be advantageous to have some, some of the unions be um, uh, so older Americans could age in place and, you know, um, sometimes rental works better for that type of thing or, um, so I, I wouldn't say, I w wouldn't suggest to rule it out altogether, but I would say that for the most part, I would envision that them being condos for sale. Um, and that would be something to explore as part of a developer agreement to see what was proposed. I would imagine that that would be something that would be attractive to developers too because the long term managing rental properties is not something most developers really want to do. Some do, some specialize in it, but it's a good question. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else down there? Mr. Um, Dockett. Go ahead, Mr. Dockett. Um, you mentioned here that uh, 24, excuse me, 94 percent of this is going to be taxable, could be taxable. Uh, I don't see how it could be unless there's quite a bit of development done. Uh, we paid $329,000 for this property. We took $24,000 off the tax roll that, were, that people were paying, the owners were paying. We probably spent $100,000 since then, uh, and we haven't really done anything. No, I, I'm, I'm asking how, how you come up with 94% of this being taxable. Um, well, it's a, it's, um, the calculation is based on the building component, uh, the, which I've described as being loft buildings and r row houses and mixed use buildings, which are fronting on Main Street, as being um, private uses that will be taxable. Okay. And based on the value uh, that would cost, which we factored at 250 square feet, uh, $250 per square feet, pardon me, uh, to build it. Um, that is 94% of the, the total value, um, which factored in also the cost to build the public amenities like the Banshell, Town Green, circulation system. So 94% of the total value um, would be taxable based on this analysis, which it, of course it can be refined and there could be further iterations of it. No buildings, no tax. What's that? If there's no buildings, there's no tax on it. Yes, well this, the plan that I'm referring to shows a, num a number of buildings on it. So yes, you're absolutely right. If there were no buildings, it would be uh, perhaps 100% non-taxable. And, and we're looking at five, $50 million project you're projecting. Well, well, no, if there's no buildings, then you're taking away 
44 million dollars of that. So then you're what you're doing then is you're looking at this is estimate. We're talking estimated numbers about five million dollars to build the public amenities with no revenue. Where's the money coming from? Um, do we have anyone else that hasn't spoken? Um, Ms. Zelnick. Um, I, I really do like the idea of doing an RFP to see if there is interest in this design to um, help um, with the process. I think that's a very good idea. Um, there does seem to be, looking at the surveys that were done, the survey at the Trunk or Treat event as well as the tax mailing survey, seems like majority of the residents between what 61 and 64 percent have indicated they only want it to be a park. So I think um, as a community we need to get more input and ensure both as an, a developer that we're going in a direction that a developer would be interested but as a community that that is the direction that we want to go in. Okay. So I think there's two challenges out there for the downtown development group as well as the DDA and the township board. Mr. Roman. Um, yes, I, I see on your uh, recommendations for the next step that um, the North Village plan, which is this one, be incorporated into the downtown plan, which is yet to be done. Um, does it, would that cause any problem uh, in the RFP process, w I mean, wouldn't you need to have a definite um, go-ahead plan with this with this particular plan to, to in order to, to move forward? Um, and if not, what what time frame are we looking at with well, the group? I think that's that's a good question. So, um, from a planning perspective, um, the DDA has put aside budget to work on. The downtown plan um, and um, we envision that as being a continuation of the downtown planning group pro project we will incorporate you know more focus groups more uh, workshop opportunities um, and formalizing this into a plan and I think that part of the benefit to doing this this way is if we do make some modifications to the the plan for the um, North Village site is that that could be incorporated and modified as we continue to work on the plan for the, the broader downtown. I think with respect to the release of the RFP, I think one of the benefits is then we can actually get some outside influence while we're working on the plan for downtown. Um, so really the, the purpose of this point and where we're at is to prepare this study that lists a number of preferences, um, but then test, uh, see if there's interest in developing it, and we can, you know, certainly modify, um, modify the plan if needed, um, or um, affirm the plan. But that that's a part of the broader township planning. Um, what, you know, I was thinking um, on the way up here. They have you got you have probably heard the term analysis paralysis, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's fun because it rhymes and. Uh, um, you know, there is pressure. The township um, paid a, a good amount of money for this, and the idea that we should make some decisions or at least see what's oppor what op the opportunities are soon, I think is, is hanging out there. Uh, so I was co trying to co come up with a, a rhyme. It's, I think that this process, we were trying to get traction for action. <laughs> I don't know. It's new. I don't know if it works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. I, I did have some other questions, more detailed on the plan. Sure. If, if you want to address those now, okay. um, what, was there any uh, further consideration, or or why not, um, on possibly more utilization in, in your upper north section there? Where I, I understand it, um, it would be where you would have to get with M. Dot and, and realize a, a egress. Um, out to the public roads and what, and what have you. Um, was there any look at possibly um, more in that section? Um, I think that what we learned is that one of the values of doing scenario-based alternatives analysis is we got to look and really test a number of people's gut reactions to different levels of intensity. And I think what we found, and this was already alluded to, that a lot of township residents did prefer 
a, a park only use. They really wanted the site to be public amenities. So we felt by presenting a synthesis plan that really was a, a low intensity scenario that um, respectfully kind of using a cluster development style uh, put some of the uh, private uses or housing or mixed uses on the site edges, uh, but not at an intensity that we felt would um, potentially diminish the public use. We felt like that was a vision that was really consistent with what we heard, even consistent with you know, the 60% of people that said park only. Most of them, a number of them also said that they would the, the, if, they ha if there was one business use, they re they'd really like a restaurant. So, you know, I think there's a, a recognition that, you know, Main Street is Main Street. And, you know, where the park is and what a park only is is kind of something we could get more feedback on. But when you look at this site, you know, we've kind of uh, respected the wishes of residents. And, you know, more than 60% of the site is a park only. Um, and mm -hmm. that is one of the ways we, we look at it is how much of the space have we dedicated to um, public uses and have we per potentially provided a way for those public uses to be financed that in a way that wouldn't um, impact taxpayers to the extent that if there were no um, taxable value on the site, it would. Uh, thank you. And, and did, uh, was there a, did, did you have more of a finite count of like public uh, parking options, like looking at this green uh, with the uh, diagonal park parking areas on two sides. Um, was there any uh, formal count that was come up through the study? You know, um, we didn't do a formal count. Um, oh, wait, no, actually, maybe we did. I'm trying to remember. What happened in the white? It, um, the, uh, the numbers that I saw I, I thought were possibly pertaining to the uh, develop the, the development would be the parking for Casper um, either the um, row houses or possibly the other residential loft areas is that is that what I'm gathering from from the chart um, yeah so the chart there we go I'm on the right page now the chart shows, um, shows units, uh, and that's the mixing of retail and housing units. Um, so we're showing, you know, 158 units. Um, but what we did, we did provide a parking uh, analysis, and it was based on the fact that um, uh, parking spaces are 10 feet by 20 feet, and most parking aisles are 24 feet wide, so you add another 12 feet and you can come up with a square footage estimate for you if you had good utilization how much you could fit in an area so our parking counts are based on the, the size of the areas on the plan that are shown for parking as opposed to doing an actual uh, designing the parking lot does that make sense no uh, yeah I understand how you write did you did, but there was no actual count that was come up that was come on yeah, so there? that's what I'm, I'm saying. So phase one included 78 parking space, phase two, 133, and phase three, 110. Um, so total uh, 315, 320. Okay. Um, and that's um, formal parking spaces. I think we also t discussed the, comment, uh, the, the option of doing flex parking for events where you could um, transition some of the... Um, <coughs> Uh, community lawn area or even um, some of the circulation system to become special event parking. Right. Which and uh, my last question, uh, what was the thought behind the uh, parking reserve areas on the south portion of the site? Um, th those are labeled parking reserves because what we wanted to do was um, maintain the trees so without doing a formal tree survey to see um, which of those natural features really should be uh, maintained or preserved, um, we couldn't estimate how much parking could go there. But the idea is that we could actually probably design a functional space and maintain most of the trees okay. in that area. So that is open in the discussion of that area? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Ms. Steffens. Thank you. Nice plan. 
Very nice plan. Good, good, good work. I do have a couple of questions, and they may be too fine a detail, something you haven't um, worked out yet. But looking at the synthesis plan that we've been talking about, what would be the overall density if this housing was all built as you have proposed? Um, you know, I didn't present it like that, um, but we've got 158 units um, and 23 acres. Some of those were um, buildings, I mean retail, too, though. I thought it was 136. It, it is, but we didn't actually specifically say with the mixed-use buildings whether one unit might be housing or office, so we've just added that in as a unit. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, uh, well, that's actually a pretty easy calculation. So 153 divided by 23 is roughly six. Six, six, eight, eight, seven. Six. So seven per acre. Okay. Ish. And then what has been your experience in other communities with the financing piece of it on a mixed use development? Um, it, I think your question might be asking, you know, will, will banks finance development like this? Right. Um, the trend has been more and more, they're easier to finance and sometimes even more easier to finance than um, <coughs> su suburban style um, uh, housing developments. Um, when done right, um, it's not really an issue. Uh, there was a time period when it was hard to get things like this financed. Mm, any more down here first? Did anyone know? Okay. Um, Ms. Otto. I know that it's rather soon in, um, in, in the development of where we're at today, but I would like to see at some point that we do have an ROI, um, that we show, you know, like the purchase of the property, the loss of the property tax versus uh, the revenue from the development that the township's receiving and any future estimates on property tax. I think having that estimate at some at some point is going to be very beneficial for this project. I wholeheartedly agree. Once I started getting to the numbers, we wanted to keep running and start pouring into those types of fiscal analysis. And I, mm -hmm. I think that, imagine that will be part of our next phases. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dockett, and then I'll speak. Uh, you said time. that... Uh, a few minutes ago, that the DDA would be financing some or funding funding this. Uh, as far as I know, the DDA does not have any money. Uh, now, has that changed? Or, uh, I won't be able to hear you, Barb, unless you're talking. Uh, two years ago, the Northfield Chamber of Commerce gave a donation of twenty-five thousand dollars to the DDA to be used for a downtown project and it was voted unanimously by our DDA uh, in February to use that money for uh, financing the, uh, the balance of the downtown study by McKenna Associates. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So I, I guess I would like to say that this is really really fits what our zoning calls for for that particular spot it's it could be a standalone project all by itself and it fits the master plan and it fits our zoning so it's really exciting that this is this has come to fruition um, what I'm interested in mostly is a spectrum of housing opportunities in that area of perhaps intergenerational so when I when I go to some of the meetings I go to they say 30 per, only 30 percent of the households in the U.S. have children, and we're not really f meeting the housing needs of, you know, people who don't have children. You know, maybe the millennials that we're not attracting to our community, and um, and older individuals. When we you only have 2.5 people per home, you know, we really don't have the kind of spectrum of housing opportunities I think that that people might be looking for out there to help with this, uh, you know, with our, to build our community. So when I see the loft apartments there, that's pretty exciting to me. I'm, I'm interested in people being able to age in place. 
And then if we get some older individuals moving into you know, the downtown, it might free up a three or four bedroom home for a bigger family that would then help uh, the Whitmore Lake School District. So um, I'm really excited about this project. Uh, you know, I think it's very consistent and um, I, I'm looking forward to it uh, moving forward. So uh, tonight isn't a night when we're gonna say, you know, let's think about it a couple weeks and we'll see something at the Board of Trustees meeting about an RFP uh, to put forward if that is, um, everyone else is um, amenable to that and um, the Planning Commission may uh, wanna have, have some input also as they think about it at their next meeting, may have some more questions or you know, want more input. So, uh, Ms. Bellager. Excuse my ignorance on this, but regarding uh, RFP, can somebody just give me a quick summary of what this is and how this works? Is this evidently, it sounds like we're going out and bidding to see who might wanna, hey, who would like to jump on this opportunity of developing this location? Mm -hmm. I understand it to be that. What is the uh, basic steps? Can somebody mm -hmm. just give me a quick outline of what the steps happen with regards to getting, getting the um, So we the would RFP prepare. And what happens? Thank you. Yeah, um, the township would prepare. Uh, I, I think a, a brief RFP that states the, the objectives and what um, description of what we would expect from the developer to propose. Um, if there were an you know, offer to purchase, structure of the deal. Um, developer financials um, and uh, a vision for the development, um, different pieces of it. And we would also provide the North Village plan as a um, guide to, um, to you know, help developers just know what's been considered this, for the site um, and what potential options the township wanted to see with respect to development. Um, and um, as I mentioned prior, I think we would ask uh, for the Township Board, possibly Planning Commission, to issue a resolution in support of releasing the RFP. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'd establish a timeline, mm -hmm. uh, probably give people 30 to 60 days um, to respond. Um, and then um, when we received the Proposals, um, those proposals would com come back for, for review, uh, probably with a, a recommendation, um, possibly from the, D the downtown planning group um, as to which, if any, of the proposals met, met the design objectives. Okay, we need to wrap this part up and move on to the strategic um, action plan. That's the next part. Um, oh, well, do we have any burning questions out there in, you know, in the audience? And if any of the downtown planning group members would like to speak about the process and um, that you're certainly welcome to get up and, and do that. I see anybody? Oh, Ms. Olney, go, go ahead and. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to take a moment to reiterate what Barb had said at the very beginning of just thanking um, those of you who were on the previous board and also those of you on this current board for supporting uh, community involvement in this process. Um, it's been really exciting for me as an existing community member to get involved in this way and meet uh, fellow neighbors and fellow residents and really work towards uh, building a community that I want to remain in and raise my kids in. So thank you for the opportunity and thank you for listening to the presentation. Great, um, let's, Ms. Mr. Seacrest. Uh, just, just something quick. We, the downtown planning group was very focused on making sure that this project ended up returning to the township money to cover whatever it needed to cover and then some. We wanted it to be a plus for the township. We focused on that the entire way. So those folks that wanted the park only, of course, that's not an option that's gonna allow that. Uh, and we recognized that and we, we pretty much focused on the reality that okay, we're gonna have to have some other uses besides just a park to make that work. And when we had the, the gathering here, and Paul mentioned this, a number of folks came that were the 60 plus percent that said, hey, we want a park only. And those folks started out that way, but I have to say that their opinions 
absolutely evolved with the recognition of the things we've talked about. And they left, by and large, and I'm not going to say 100%, realizing that some of the development we've talked about makes good sense, and it still allows a great park area to be there. So I feel like the 60 plus percent that's at park only will realize very quickly the realities of this, that the park will still be there, and that we'll be all better off better tax base, et cetera, et cetera, going forward. We thought about this the whole way through, and I really feel like any feedback we get going forward will re re, uh, reinforce what I just said from, from the community as a, as a whole. We're not ignoring them at all. I think that they'll see the same thing and realize that. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody else have a quick question? Or, um, Mr. Stoyer. Chuck Stoyer. Um, the, one of my concerns is we're talking about an RFP and, and going out and sensing interest in the in developer and business community. It, it seems like we have ignored from a couple standpoints what's going on on 23. I don't think you're going to find developers, people with big wads of money in their pocket, wanting to do anything until they see whether this band-aid fix that MDOT's offering us for 23 is going to work. And your plan has a problem in that if the 23 fix doesn't work, they're going to be having to do a real widening of 23. Because 23's broke from Toledo to Flint. Okay. And there is a planning process flaw in Ann Arbor thinking in general in that parking and traffic flow has not been considered very well in, in, in general, unfortunately. And we're stuck with that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Steyer. You Appreciate it. Okay. Um, Ms. Jack has I just enough. wanted to make a really quick comment, okay. and I wanted to thank the community and the residents and the downtown development group and McKenna and Associates for all the work that they put into this. This is much more than I even expected when we first talked about this. It's, you did an amazing job, and it's, I, I like it. Good job. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Gordon. Last, um, this will be the last comment out there so we can get moving on. Um, I really like the whole process, especially involving the, the public all the way up until this point. Um, I was just curious why the next step would be RFP if, in fact, what you did was you collected all this information from the public. Now we've just got the plan. There's only 24 people here. Wouldn't the next logical step be go back to the community and say, thanks for all your input. This is what we've got to show for it. What do you think of our end product before we go out to the, uh, to the developers? Because, you know, nobody, I don't think, asked the question of the 60-plus percent who said they just wanted it to be a park. How much would they be willing to pay in taxes to keep it just a park? Maybe they wouldn't be willing to pay anything. You know, and if they're not willing to pay, then, then you've got to have some other means of financing it. But the question wasn't asked. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Well, I think right. that that was a, a great comment mm -hmm. and perhaps a good segue to the, ne the next phase, which I was about to present. Okay, if, go if ahead. If that's okay. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I actually think that this site, it's one part of really the entire downtown. And I think that that, that question um, and the future for downtown is what residents are involved in, and that's what everyone's really excited about. So the idea is um, by now expanding our view from site specific to more of uh, the entire downtown, we'll continue the conversation and capitalize on the momentum that we've got um, from residents and uh, the board planning commission and um, the, the DDA, uh, the parks committee uh, commission in um, moving forward uh, with this, this vision. So what I have here is, this is, you know, loosely how we envision um, expanding uh, the plan from this site to look at downtown. So I think step one is to look at alternatives for key sites. So, and as I mentioned when I was talking about the connectivity to um, surrounding neighborhoods and um, really to the township as a whole, mentioned that a number of other key opportunity sites came up 
So we'd like to do a similar analysis uh, that we did on um, the uh, Northfield Community Park site to um, some of the key sites in downtown uh, so that we can uh, present along with the vision for a new development intensity or modifications to, to that site um, some other development scenarios for some other key opportunity sites, whether those be where we need new parking, um, where there are opportunities for new site development, uh, et cetera. Um, then uh, the next phase is to look at a framework for that development. So do we need to modify future land use plan? Um, are there opportunities to create gateways um, or entryway enhancements to define uh, the edges of downtown with urban design treatments? Um, do we need to modify parking standards? So do we have to look again at how we're actually valuing and um, uh, deciding how much parking should be built? And then architectural standards. As I mentioned um, when we were talk talking about the, um, the character and feel uh, and durability of materials that we wanted to go into the Van Curler site, we would possibly formalize what that means in this downtown process. So the architectural standards, parking standards, those types of details that really are only considered uh, at a goal level or a policy level in the uh, North Village plan, we would iron those out in this process. Um, likewise, I mentioned some of the co connectivity issues. Um, we would look at uh, where the non-motorized connections could be. Um, and of course, that would be um, looking at some of the township's other guidance uh, documents, like the park plan. Um, and we'd look at potential modifications uh, to street sections and uh, also creating uh, desired street sections for any new streets that were on the Van Curler site. And then uh, specifically creating a parking plan. So not the standards for how much parking should be built, but actually where that parking would go. Um, then we would transition into downtown design guidelines. So this would be more like design for public spaces, design for facade improvements, um, awnings, those types of features, uh, and uh, landscaping guidance, as well as um, identity or branding guidelines and um, wayfinding guidelines. Uh, so where, where parking was, so that it was signed in a way that was consistent and um, created a real theme for the downtown area. And then all of that would come together in a strategic action plan. So a step-by-step -step guide to what should be done first, second, third, um, to implement the plan. Um, and I think that as part of this, um, we're going to continue the public engagement process. Uh, the DPG has been really the leadership group to, for planning so far. Uh, we're going to uh, include the DDA in, in those, those meetings. So I think this will be a lot of joint meetings between um, our, our downtown planning group uh, incorporating with the DDA, but uh, more focus groups. And then I think that the pop-up workshop that we did at um, the tr Trunk or Treat event, I think we'd like to find some opportunities to do that at some future upcoming events in the township. Um, now what we get by doing this, especially if we launch the RFP now, is at some point during this process, we're going to get real feedback from the development community about what types of things they think are feasible for that site. And I think that that is, it's really another form of public engagement um, where we're going to get feedback from interested parties and we're going to learn a lot from this process and I think it's going to be extremely valuable. Um, but that's why at this time we're not moving forward with the North Village plan and saying let's adopt this now. We're saying this is part of a much broader planning initiative that's happening in the township and we need to continue that planning initiative. But uh, if we weren't, if we don't go ahead and get some feedback with what we've got now, we're, we're not going to get that, that key feedback loop. And I think that's what we're trying to get at this phase. So this is the immediate future for residents that have part, participated in uh, the North Village plan. Um, the idea is that this plan and our continued conversation about downtown as a whole, uh, we're going to roll into that Im immediately. Um, so uh, we're going to continue to involve everybody and give everyone an opportunity to share with uh, township officials uh, their vision and, and their expectations for the future development of downtown. Okay. And that is the next phase. I don't know if there are any other comments on that. Um, Barb, did you want to say something uh, about this particular portion? No? Okay. So
Okay, so it's my understanding that we'll, we will definitely have the groups working together, the DDA and the downtown planning group, and we'll need the input of planning commissioners. So, and these, these are open meetings. So um, I think it's important that our residents um, have the opportunity to, to comment and, and sit in on the meetings, at, you know, as they're available. Yes, it could be a big meeting, but you get, you get more, more valuable feedback that way. So, um, and we could have subcommittees even working on some of the things. So that would be really helpful. Um, Ms. Bellager. So how would people uh, be coming, how would they look for the information as to what dates and times these meetings occur? How would they be informed? We'll have to put them up on the website. Okay, so people can go to the website and find out the when and where? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, thanks. Here, yeah. yeah. And these documents are on the Downtown Planning Group site right now, so if anybody is at home, wants to actually take a look at these, um, they're on the site. Well, the, the math, this one, and the PowerPoint presentations, so. Go ahead. So if there's no questions on the uh, scope for the downtown strategic plan, I'm going to pass it off to my colleague Patrick, who is going to put all this within the context of the broader planning work program for the township. Patrick. Thank you, Paul. And uh, members of the board and planning commission, thank you for uh, having us here tonight to go over these items. And uh, thank you to members of the public, uh, members of the DPG and the DDA who came out tonight. Um, this is a very well attended meeting and we're excited about the interest in the upcoming proposed plans. Uh, what I'd like to do in this part of the agenda is to go over um, a letter that we had uh, sent to the Board of Trustees and the Planning Commission dated February 9th. And the uh, subject is the proposed 2017 Community Development Work Plan for Northfield Township. Uh, this is sort of a uh, catch-all type of work plan based on our experience uh, working with the township, um, seeing some of the ongoings of the township, and building on some of the momentum of some of the ongoing projects. And uh, in this letter, we propose uh, six particular items uh, to assist the township with over the next year. The first is um, our attendance at uh, DPG meetings and other ongoing assistance. Uh, the purpose of that is, um, as the DPG concludes the uh, North Village Master Plan, uh, the DPG uh, plans to keep momentum and continue the planning efforts with the downtown strategic plan. So um, I think that is uh, almost baked into um, the next phase of the uh, downtown strategic plan. The next item that uh, we propose is an update to the master plan. The original master plan was adopted in 2012 and it was most recently amended in 2014. Uh, the master plan is uh, strong and it provides a very clear vision of what the township wants in the future. And um, the master plan has also been successfully implemented and defended over the last several years. So that's a document that the community should be very proud of. Um, as things uh, come along, um, in the past and currently, um, there are opportunities that come up to amend the master plan, similar to when it was amended in 2014. Uh, there are a few items here um, that would warrant such amendments. The first is the Northfield uh, Community Park Master Plan, or the North Village Master Plan. Um, with the completion of that plan, there may not be a formal adoption process with the Planning Commissioner Township Board, but it's an excellent time to incorporate that plan or elements of the plan into the Township's master plan to at least certify the fact that the effort took place and uh, to acknowledge some of, the, uh, some of the fruits of that effort. Uh, the second part of the master plan update we would propose um, would be details of a non-motorized transportation plan. The current master plan recommends non-motorized transportation like pedestrian and bicycle, and it references a map of the 2006 non-motorized plan for Washtenaw County that was developed by Watts. Um, at this time, we would uh, propose an effort to go uh, a step or two further to identify specific areas of the township where non-motorized transportation um, may be a higher priority. Uh, there are a couple of elements to that um, that are kind of the low hanging fruit. Uh, the first is where our neighbors are building their non-motorized infrastructure. If there's any um, areas where it's easy to build those areas out into the township, uh, those can be very good opportunities as our neighbors are uh, growing theirs. The next is if there are any high priority corridors in the community that may not abut the neighbors, but they're high priority nonetheless, 
then uh, those would be something to put into the plan and to certify as high priority. There are also other efforts in terms of building out the infrastructure uh, township-wide. Uh, some of the neighboring townships um, to the Northwest and Hamburg Township and the Northeast and Lyon Township, uh, those are two townships that McKenna has assisted over the last several years of building out its non-motorized infrastructure. So uh, your neighbors are, are building out theirs and, um, and it's good to keep an eye on that and to continue your own efforts. Uh, the next element of the master plan we propose is to include more goals and objectives for agricultural production and preservation. The master plan includes several um, great goals and objectives for farmland preservation. With uh, the recent appointment of the Farmland and Natural Areas Preservation Committee, uh, it's a good time if the master plan is being amended to open up uh, comments uh, from the Preservation Committee to see if they have any goals and objectives that they want to incorporate into the master plan or if they've done any studies that warrant inclusion into the master plan. So it's a good time to involve that committee in the process. Uh, the next part of the master plan update would be updating the zoning plan. The Michigan Planning Enabling Act requires all master plans to have what's called a zoning plan, uh, which in essence is a relationship between your future land use map and your zoning map. And there has to be a relationship between the two. Uh, there is a zoning plan in the master plan. Um, the township has recently um, removed two districts from the township, the Enterprise Service District and the Highway Commercial District. So with the recent removal of those districts, uh, now would be a time to look at that zoning plan in the master plan to see if we still have a fit with the future land use map, and if not, to update the zoning plan to reflect uh, the future vision of the community. The next item for the master plan update is the public participation. Uh, one of the items that um, we would uh, eventually circle back to it, uh, should it happen, is the uh, Cobalt Community uh, Survey that um, has been proposed by the community. Um, in our letter of February 9th, we have some comments about the survey, some relatively minor comments, and uh, a couple of questions where we uh, recommend a, a different wording or structure. But if if that survey does happen, uh, it's an excellent time to include the results into the master plan. If we're doing the survey, we might as well uh, yield some of the results and, and put them into the master plan so that they impact the policies of the community. Uh, there are also other public participation efforts that we could assist with, uh, such as an online survey, public workshops, and charrettes, and stakeholder interviews, similar to uh, what uh, the township did with the North Village master plan on a much broader scale with the general master plan. Uh, so those are some items that we see um, over our work in the township over the last several months and more than a year where we have seen some opportunities where um, changes happen in the township and as the township is growing, not just um, in population, but in terms of um, the efforts of planning growing for natural areas preservation and focus on downtown development, uh, that now is a good time to um, to follow up with that momentum and implement some of that into the master plan. The uh, third item in our letter is the downtown strategic plan, which I'll, I'll skip over. Uh, Paul uh, went over it in pretty good detail. Uh, the fourth item that we note here are uh, zoning ordinance updates. As we've been working with the zoning ordinance over the last uh, several months, uh, there are areas of the zoning ordinance where we've noticed where there could be some major improvements made. The first item are uh, the amendments to encourage more development and activity downtown. Uh, there are um, districts in downtown Whitmore Lake, um, three different subdistricts for the downtown area. In many cases, there are many conditional uses that could otherwise be permitted uses. Uh, the difference being that if there is a permitted use, uh, in most cases, somebody can get a permit and occupy a building, and if the business doesn't work, or they, they grow out of the building and someone else comes in for a permitted use, that next person can get a permit and occupy it if the use is permitted, classified as such in the zoning ordinance. In some of these downtown districts, there are many conditional uses, which means that some of these uses, um, if someone uh, stops their use, the next person comes in, more, than li more likely than not, it'll, 
be a conditional use, they'll have to come to the Planning Commission, to the Township Board, um, they'll have to have a public hearing, and in many cases that can discourage development, especially if it's a small business. Uh, this isn't to say that all uses should be permitted, uh, they shouldn't, but we should take a look at some of the uses in the land use table for the downtown district to see if it's really um, fulfilling the vision of the community. Uh, for example, in the North Village Zoning District, uh, retail and restaurants are conditional uses. Uh, those are things, if we want to realize the vision of the downtown plan, we should consider making permitted uses so that we can have turnover in business, um, whether it's because they grow out of their place or if, unfortunately, a business doesn't work. We want to make it easier for turnover to happen um, if, if the economics demand it. So we would recommend looking at the land uses in the downtown districts and reevaluating whether they should be permitted and conditional uses. The next item that we recommend are um, uses to encourage more agricultural tourism. Um, agricultural tourism is a conditional use in the AR district. In many cases, uh, they should be just because of the intensity of some of the uses. In some cases, the Michigan Right to Farm Act requires some agricultural tourism uses to be permitted uses. So we should reevaluate that and make sure we're consistent with the Michigan Right to Farm Act, as well as to take advice from the Natural Areas Preservation Committee to see if they have any recommendations on what we could do in our zoning ordinance to uh, encourage more agricultural tourism, which would in turn encourage more preservation of agricultural lands in the township. Do we, do we have any of this on our sheet about the agricultural? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a summary of it, um, where it reads amendments to encourage more agricultural tourism. Okay. All right. Sorry, I I didn't see that. Go and then ahead, it's uh, near the bottom of page three of four. Uh, item four B. Gotcha. Uh, the next item there is to um, adopt a land use table to simplify uses and fix discrepancies. Uh, we have a uh, residential and a non-residential land use table that's used administratively that lines up in a grid all of the di all the uses, all of the districts, and whether the uses are permitted, conditional, or prohibited. Uh, it's a very user-friendly table, and uh, with the right format, uh, we would recommend incorporating that into the zoning ordinance and deleting the pages of text that list the uses. It makes it user friendly, not just for the applicants, but, uh, but for the township to administer. Mm -hmm. And many zoning ordinances as they evolve in other communities are going more towards the table just because of the user friendliness of it. Okay. Um, and then the final item with the zoning is uh, to address medical marijuana. Um, I don't want to go too deep on this subject, but just to give a summary that um, Late uh, last year in 2016, the state adopted the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act that authorized communities to allow for five different classifications of medical marijuana uses. Uh, from what we've uh, been able to learn, um, there's no requirement for any community to allow for any of those five uses. Um, it's an, it's an opt-in type of law, so if a community does not opt in, uh, theoretically it would not allow those uses. Um, that's a discussion that uh, we would want to have with the Planning Commission just to go over what those uses are, to discuss them. Um, if at the end of the day the township wants to do nothing, um, that's perfectly okay. Uh, one recommendation we would make though is to evaluate the current medical marijuana regulations in the zoning ordinance, um, which allows for growing by caregivers as a home occupation. Um, at the time that those were written, I think they were in 2013, um, I think uh, they were probably completely uh, consistent with state law. Uh, since then, I think the, medical, the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act may have been amended. I know that they've changed the definition of what an enclosed lock facility is to define indoors versus outdoors. So that's something we would just want to look at to make sure that we're still consistent with the state act that was adopted in uh, late 2008. Um, and then there are two more things in the work plan here. The uh, item number five, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. The current plan won't expire until 2020. So as of right now, you have a current uh, uh, Parks and Recreation Master Plan on file with the State Department of Natural Resources. Um, during any uh, five-year period, a community can amend a plan. And with the upcoming completion of the North Village Community uh, Master Plan, 
uh, we recommend considering incorporating that into the Parks and Rec Master Plan. Uh, by incorporating that into the Parks and Rec Plan, it makes the township eligible for certain recreation grants that may be out there as a funding source for some of the recreational improvements um, in the North Village Plan. And finally, um, we have a recommendation here for any capital improvement program assistance. The Michigan Planning and Enabling Act requires communities with water or sewer facilities to approve a CIP. Um, if the CIP process allows for townships and its departments to um, include projects there, and if it's an annual part of your budget, that's something that we can also assist with. There is one other item that's not in the letter that I do want to discuss uh, regarding the zoning ordinance, and that's the subject of signs. Um, about a year and a half ago in the summer of 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled on a, a pretty important sign case that uh, basically required that all communities in the nation uh, must make their ordinances more content neutral. Uh, some ordinances are, are going 100% content neutral, others are uh, making distinctions based on commercial and non-commercial signage. Uh, there are different levels of uh, risk tolerance that communities have, but essentially uh, what it boils down to is for um, non-commercial types of speech, um, that particular case dealt with uh, religious speech versus political speech versus uh, temporary use non-commercial speech. In that particular case, the community regulated those forms of speech differently. Signs for a temporary event were regulated different than political signs, which were regulated different than you know, non-commercial message signs. And the Supreme Court basically said that um, we can't regulate signs based on the content of the sign itself. And so every community has had to go and look at its sign ordinance to see if it's content neutral, and if not, make amendments to make it more compliant with uh, what they thought the intent of the Supreme Court's ruling was. Uh, I'll admit the Supreme Court ruling was vague. There's no consensus on what exactly a lawful sign ordinance is. Um, so no community will handle it exactly the same. But one of the things that we'll want to do this year, probably sooner rather than later, is to do um, a minor analysis of the current sign regulations, identify some of the items that are uh, clearly in need of amendment based on the Supreme Court's ruling, and then make some recommendations to the Planning Commission. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, wrap up our proposed work plan for 2017, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dockett. Uh, fees played. Uh Page four, uh, a little bit more than halfway down. <clears throat> you got uh, this $18,500. Is this the money that the DDA is talking about coming up with? Mr. Duckett, um, you're, you're on a different project than Mr. No, Sloan this is, is what he was talking about. No, it, that's the strategic plan, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Sloan was talking about the work plan for um, the uh, Planning Commission, and you're now back on the uh, strategic plan. Um, is Mr. Well, this is since he's been up here, we're talking. Okay. Um, Mr. Lippins can speak to the 18,000. Um, well, all I want to know is, okay. is this the $18,000? 18,500. Mm -hmm. Then on the next page, number five, they got a $6,400 bill. Who's going to pay for that? I just want to know where all this money's coming from. The, the DDA has uh, allocated funds for that, Mr. Uh, for, Duckett. For what? For both? The for the strategic plan. The proposal you're looking at is the proposal we put together for the downtown strategic plan, mm -hmm. which is the project that's been funded by the DDA. And I reviewed prior to um, Patrick talking, I reviewed the scope for that. So that budget is to pay for the scope that I presented for the continuation of planning in downtown. This deal here tonight? We, we just paid $18,000 two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm wondering what this other $18,000 is. I, as I said, it, it's for the scope for the continued downtown strategic plan. So the North North Village plan was a, se a separate project, and that's what we presented tonight. And now we're looking at the entire downtown. And what about the $7,500 the worth on the next page? Is that part of it, too? He's, he's talking about the public engagement portion, I believe. And, um, you know, the, all... The, no, the it says design framework. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Well, right. that I mean, entire. I'm not going to sit here for an hour and 45 minutes and listen to their spiel and not be able to ask some questions there. I mean, what the hell are we supposed to be doing? We're just trying to clarify for you, Mr. Um, Doc. Well, you don't have to stick your nose in it. I didn't okay. ask you. We'll let I Mr. see, I make a question, and then right away, you jump right on me. We'll let and, Mr. And, uh, Mr. Lemons will take care of it. And I don't you don't do it to other people on this board, but you do it to me. And I'm not going to put up with it. You got that straight? No, when no. I ask a question, I order. should be answered. Mr. Dockett. Feel free to ask your question. Oh, well, Mr. I, I tried to ask it, and you butt in. Go ahead, Mr. Dockett. I, I want to know about the the six the eighty five hundred dollars. I I believe I answered it. What did you tell, tell me? The letter that you're looking at is the scope for the downtown plan, and all of the funds proposed in that plan were authorized by the DDA for us to continue working planning in downtown. So, so yes, the I, the items in that letter are it's a scope that we a scope of work we propose to do the downtown plan, and it has been authorized by the DDA. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, I want to say, Mr. Sloan, this is an exceptional document. You bring so many pieces together. I feel like play chess. It's exceptional. Um, Thank you. I do have a question. I think about a really important issue that you bring up regarding. The medical marijuana, which, back to this chessboard, has so many pieces involved. Um, I understand we have something like less than nine months to make this decision, right? We need to either opt in, opt out, or make an ordinance not to opt in? Um, from uh, what I understand from uh, what I've read from MTA and other publications, um, the um, prevailing legal opinion throughout the state, and this doesn't mean it's specific to any community, but it seems to be that um, if a community does nothing, then they're not opting in. That a community does not have to take an action to opt out. Uh, now that may be a prudent thing to do for most communities just to affirm what their intentions are should they be uh, to opt out, that may be by a resolution, a simple motion, or as far as an ordinance amendment, just to uh, be explicit. Um, but um, for other communities that want to entertain it, uh, it would be a best practice to have something on the books by, I think, December is when the state wants to start issuing licenses. Many, um, many medical marijuana uh, operators are trying to get to communities now to get their entitlements done. Um, a lot of existing operators in, in communities, in grow centers, for example, that have legally, I won't say legally, but uh, have operated in communities with the authorization by the community, uh, whether they went to the planning commission or the city council or, or whatever, um, a lot of those users that have been growing or dispensing or whatever it is for several years, they're coming to the communities trying to get them to adopt ordinances so that they can remain in business. Uh, those are the biggest ones where there's a sense of urgency, where there's, there's an existing business there that the community has authorized where they're trying to get an ordinance adopted. Uh, in Northfield Township, I don't think there's any uh, such ordinance on the books that I'm aware of, so uh, I don't think there would be a sense of urgency for the township to do anything in that regard unless it wanted to. So would you suggest then that it seems to me that the DPG, uh, the Planning Commission, um, the Planning Commission, the Zoning Board, it seems to me that we each have a piece that we need to understand um, that would maybe it would be worthwhile to get a member from each group together because zoning is going to have something to say with this. Obviously the Planning Commission has to say something about this. The downtown planning group, it would enormously impact. It seems like everybody would have a part of this decision. Is it important for us to... And the public has to have some input on this is a huge deal. Um, I think it would start with the Planning Commission to, to have it on an agenda. If the uh, Planning there's a few different ways that uh, this, this could go. If the Planning Commission determined that they wanted to do nothing, that they didn't want to opt in, um, then I would recommend making that motion and forwarding that to the township board. If the township board is okay with it, the township board may just acknowledge the motion and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, if the planning commission wants to uh, investigate the possibility of allowing any of the five uses, then I think there would be uh, public input, uh, there would be a discussion of uh, crafting an ordinance, there would certainly be a public hearing 
um, and most likely um, comment from the board uh, if and when it gets to the board level. The board may want to have its own public hearing, may want to have its own public participation to make sure that um, everyone's aware of what's being proposed. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Chick, go ahead. Um, the medical marijuana ordinance that's on the books now, the Planning Commission did create, and it was adopted <clears throat> by the board. But in this instance, the board would be the one that would make the decision on how we want to move forward as far as opting in or opting out or doing nothing. Absolutely. Um, the board is the, it's the, uh, the policy making body. The planning commission would just be a recommending body to the board. So most policy for the zoning ordinance or the master plan, it generates from the planning commission, but the final authority is the township board. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roman. Uh, thank you. Um, overall, the, um, the work plan that Mr. Sloan put forward, um, I feel is a very good one. Um, it's going to give the Planning Commission a basis for what we look at this year. And uh, everyone received it and, and obviously looked it over, but um, I'm glad that we had this joint meeting tonight because I would like to get feedback from the Board of Trustees on certain topics throughout this plan uh, in order for the Planning Commission to have an effective direction to travel this year with doing studies. Uh, obviously, our first and foremost uh, thing this year is going to be uh, the master plan update. So uh, there are some items that need to be uh, either completed or at least have uh, a committed direction by the Board of Trustees in order for us to, to uh, continue forward. Um, and I, I've gone right from Mr. Sloan's uh, worksheet here, but uh, obviously the community park master plan or the North Village plan is, uh, is in very good hands as we've seen tonight. So um, that is a process that's in the works and, and will need to be, uh, the planning commission will need to be updated and we are uh, planning to uh, have representation at your uh, future downtown uh, planning group. Um, the second one is uh, the non-motorized uh, transportation plan. I would like to hear from the Board of Trustees as to its importance. Um, is it feasible? Uh, is, it, is it something that uh, the Planning Commission should be uh, really delving into at this point? At this point? So um, if, you, if you like, I can run down the, the items that I think uh, the board I would like to hear from the board and then maybe they can address it individually if that's okay with the chair sure. yes, okay please. Um, the second thing the second key thing is the uh, survey obviously mr. Sloan listed uh, public participation mm -hmm. and its importance and uh, we intend to do that uh, but at this time uh, the cobalt is on retainer uh, there's been an amount paid to cobalt uh, if we wanted to continue with the survey, there's going to be um, a charge, and, and I believe the cutoff was August of this year. Um, so I would like, and I, and I know that last year the Board of Trustees, or the year prior, approved the survey in, in total. Um, but I would like to know, having the new uh, Board of Trustees members, what their thought is if the, uh, if the survey um, if, 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 you aren't, if you're willing to uh, or not spend additional funds this year to continue with the survey, and if, you know, if so, uh, I believe other groups could benefit, uh, you know, from, from the survey also, so that could be combined. And, and obviously we have a time frame we're looking at by August. And uh, the other item is the uh, Downtown Strategic Action Plan um, the, it was a it was a brief overview, but if you look at the the actual plan, it's excellent. Um, I think it's a it's a positive and the right way for the township to proceed um, in doing that and doing our uh, development work plan for the year. So I just wanted to give you my input on that, and if I could hear you know from the individual members. Uh, their thoughts on the few things that I brought up uh, so we could have a, a better direction to, to really study 
uh, certain things and, and maybe not so much. Uh, I hate to say waste time, but ultimately that would be what it, what it would be uh, if the board isn't going to, um, you know, would, wouldn't be in favor of additional funds for the, either the planning consultant or the, or the township attorney uh, or to do further studies. So thank you. Okay, thank you. I know Ms. Steffens had, had a question or comment before um, we get into all of this. Um, I, I do. A couple of uh, questions throughout the, uh, the work plan. On the agricultural production and preservation, uh, it's 2C. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the Farmland and Natural Areas Preservation Committee is a short-term committee. Um, how does that time, how does their timeline then work into the timeline of a master plan mm -hmm. review um, and then adopting any of their policies into the master plan for further farmland preservation? Um, uh, that's a really good question and um, I don't know the timeline of the farmland and natural areas preservation committee. I think if the master plan is to be initiated in terms of an amendment, uh, they're a committee that we would want to engage early on just to see what their timelines are, uh, what their deliverables are, and to see if um, we need to wait for a formal deliverable or if there's some part of their process that we can incorporate depending on how long that timeline is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, under 4A, amendments to encourage more development activity, and you were talking about the, the conditional uses versus permitted uses. When you look at our site plan review requirements, do you see anything in there that is also restricting development in the downtown area? It, are there any tweaks that need to be made to our site plan review requirements? Um, off the top of my head, there's nothing about the site plan process or the requirements that I think is prohibitive. I think the standards are uh, similar to many communities, or to that of many other communities, uh, similar to Northfield Township. Um, I think it's ma mainly just a, a, a matter of what's permitted versus okay. what's a conditional use. Um, okay. Third, on the medical marijuana, I, I think personally that we ought to wait to see what Lara comes down with um, before the township makes any, any recommendations. And certainly the township board should definitely be driving the issue of, of what the township does. Um, and finally, our sign ordinance gives me heartburn. I mean, it, I, I am surprised we have gone this far without um, some problems. So yeah, I, I would like to see the sign ordinance updated much sooner rather than, than later because it is, especially going forward when we have a, a, you know, the plans in front of us to get some development going and, and pursue um, development that our, our sign ordinance definitely needs to be addressed quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, can we have um, people react now to um, Mr. Roman's um, request for information on how we would like the Planning Commission to proceed? Uh, Mr. Dockett. Um, I may not have my figures right here, Larry, but it seems like this survey was like three or four years ago. It was quite a while ago. But when, when I was on the last board, you know, the, and, and we, we were supposed to pay like $18,000 or something, I, I forget the figure, but we did pay $8,000, and then the, between the planning commission and us, we couldn't figure out what questions to ask. So <laughs> we didn't get anything out of the $8,000, so, I would not be in favor of putting, if you're asking if, we want, if we're going to have to put in more money, I would not be in favor of that because we've already wasted $8,000 and God only knows how much more. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, like to, to respond? M Ms. Chick. I think the total was 16000 so we paid them half, mm -hmm. and that's what that's coming from. My understanding is we have to have a survey for the master plan, don't we? Uh, the minimum requirement of a master plan is just to have a, a public hearing and that's it. Um, I know that when the master plan was originally adopted in, in 2012, the township went above and beyond and had a few 
uh, public participation <coughs> sessions, uh, which were well attended and I think is a testament to uh, the uh, civic engagement of the community. So I think uh, beyond the, the regular public hearing, which are usually not well attended, we would suggest going beyond that with uh, either a written survey as uh, is proposed by uh, Cobalt, uh, perhaps an online survey, charrettes, um, visual preference surveys, similar to uh, some of the pub public participation um, events that were done with the North Village Master Plan. Yeah, I believe we sent out, Jackie, maybe you remember, 3,000 surveys by mail. It was also available online. We got over 400 responses from that survey. So it brought good response, including the charrettes and the visioning. It was wonderfully attended. Mm -hmm. Okay. It went nowhere. Ms. Bellager. Um, regarding the uh, survey, since we just talked about that, um, I read some of the questions on the survey and found them to be, um, the questions were framed such that they already were pointing in a particular direction. So the, I would say it was a bias from the beginning. And just now hearing that it's not required to have surveys and spend that money, I think we should drop the idea of surveys and continue with the public hearing, maybe more than one, by all means. Now, um, I understand, like I said, we already have $8,000 lost spent on this. Um, we can get approximately, was it four to 5000 back, which they have right now, which they would give us if we decide we're not gonna continue with it, or if we no. continue with it, we then pay them additional to finish it up. That was the last I understood. Okay. So that's regarding the survey. I would say no to the survey. The non-motorized paths, um, I feel very strongly about if we're going to engage in the non-motorized paths to utilize them in areas that will benefit our downtown primarily. So if you have something coming from uh, maybe uh, the Pinckney area, Hamburg area coming down, maybe 23, maybe uh, direct it to weave through downtown, uh, generate uh, you know, maybe a little bit of business and whatnot and then continue on to Ann Arbor. I think that would be wonderful. There's talk of something down on Pontiac Trail. I have absolutely no interest in spending our time, money, and resources on a path in the middle of nowhere. If the people want to come maybe up across a seven mile, eight mile, whatever, and work their way down 23 and through our township, I think that would be very good for us. Because you know, I like to bike, I like to run, and I, I can see the value and all that, but I don't want to spend a lot of money down Pontiac Trail where we already have thrown away the $5,000 on that. And, um, I guess that's about it. Yeah, it's, uh, we'd like to, uh, yeah, that's about it. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Otto. Okay, and in regards to the master plan, I do think that the, that the public hearing and the charrettes really were valuable in 2012. I think that's something that mm -hmm. um, you would gain value in this one as well. I think that um, I kind of, I do agree with, um, in, and I'm going to skip over going to the um, the survey. Um, I do agree with uh, Tawn that there was some direction um, in the questioning. So we really need, to, if we are going to do a survey, we really need to re-examine the wording and everything and make it more non-biased. I think together, both of them worked very well together. Um, having the charrettes, having the um, public hearing, and having the survey. Um, we've already spent 8,000. Um, uh, we approved up to 16. So um, I would rather not throw it away at this point. Um, the non-motorized pathway, I, I also agree with Tan as well. The one proposed in Lyon Township we were supposed to be paying equal amount and the land that they were utilizing was was the smallest so i think that came to the board at one time and the board said if it was more proportionate according to the usage of the land we would probably reconsider mm -hmm. but again it was a uh, non-motorized pathway going to nowhere um, so that was the main issue, and I do agree that if we have something from Hamburg Township coming into Ann Arbor, that would be a lot better. Um, I do want to address the agricultural uh, production and pres preservation. I did speak to Susan Shank uh, this week, and she would like to come to, the uh, to one of our board meetings and present 
what the committee is doing and I think that it's very valuable that we hear what they have and what they've been uh, proposing to see if that could also be part of or enhance the master plan. I don't know if we have enough in the master plan today for what they're proposing. Mm -hmm. So um, I think part of our master plan is we do have a good master plan, but I think that some of the things that were, were changing were, um, you know, like uh, the North Village area, the downtown development, that really hasn't been updated into our master plan. I mean, there were visions of it, but it wasn't, there wasn't details of it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so that addressed the downtown uh, strategic plan. And then um, I'm gonna hit the signs. I think the signs, our ordinances, I don't know. We have property that has uh, signs on them, abandoned property that has signs on them, and we can't get rid of them, and they look like blight in the area and then we have uh, business owners that have way too many signs so um, and then the last thing being medical marijuana this is something that I will not support as a board member okay. thank you and um, Can I just oh. real quickly in response to the questions the questions on the survey the last draft that you have if you have one were not cobalt's questions they did not create those those were a compilation of questions that were brought to the cobalt community. Mm -hmm. Ms. Elnock, you have yeah. some. Um, on the survey, I thought the questions were, the survey in general was way too long. I did not like the way the questions were framed at all. I'm not sure we need that. I think having public hearings and public participation would be fine. I can't remember the dollar amount. I thought it was 8,000, but I thought we were only committed for um, 4,600, maybe 6,000 at the most. But I was not very pleased with the company in general on how the questions and the survey progressed. And, um, and then the other one is the downtown planning group. Again, they've done a really good job getting input. I would you know, ask that they continue to get the input. Again, clear up, I know that, again, 63%, 64% indicated they only wanted a park only. So it'd be good to make sure that through the process, they are now coming along in an agreement that, you know, to fund it, <coughs> tax base, that we need to have kind of a mixed use. I also like the fact to go out to the developers to see what they think of the project, to see if they would be, there would be support for it and get their input. I think that is a very important aspect of the project. The non-motorized path, I think it's good to have that but I don't know what kind of priority that is because of the funding and the amount of money it takes to fund non-motorized path. I do think it's good to address it and again, make sure it's connecting somewhere and not just a piece out to nowhere. And on the um, agricultural production and preservation, I wasn't under the impression it was a short-term committee. I thought it was kind of a I'm not sure on that. I thought there was no end date to it at this point in time. Right. Um, did you want to say something, Ms. Manley? Yes. Yes. Um, again, starting with number one, I guess for the non-motorized path, I'd be interested in hearing what McKenna has to say about that since, you know, it does sound like you have some background in that. So, you know, it'd be interesting to just hear a little input on that and what it would do for our community. Um, survey, we already have the money put into it, so, and having so many things going on, I think the survey would be a good idea. But again, having everybody review it and go over the questions to make sure that they're worded the way that we feel they should be worded. Okay. So, okay. I think that's it. Um, okay, I guess I'd like to weigh in here. Um, I do think um, the master plan, uh, taking a look at that, I don't think we need wholesale changes to it, but just taking a look at it and seeing if there's some tweaks like you've suggested, I think that's good. The non-motorized transportation plan, um, we have Susan Flowers from Watts who would like to come and speak to the Planning Commission and Parks and Rec about the plan around the county, and I think it's important to have those connections. Um, grants are available occasionally, like we're hoping to use one to complete Barker Road. Um, 
but it, you know the, the connectivity is good the opportunity for safety for the bike riders out there um, you know if you have a bike rider in your family it's really nice to get from a to point a to point b not on the road so i think complete streets and the non-motorized uh, at least having a plan is important um, so i think that's good as far as the ag production and um, preservation you know, we have been going through exploring our different options for several meetings and now we're to the point of putting some a an action plan together for that so we will have some things coming up in the near future um, of what we would like to to suggest to the Planning Commission and to the Board of Trustees for that uh, we have a meeting next week April 6th I believe uh, for the Ag Land um, Ag <coughs> meeting here seven o'clock um, and then uh, the survey um, I think there can be more value to just than just the Planning Commission asking about development and we have the downtown planning group or the, the DDA who could potentially have some questions that they would like feedback from the public for and uh, we have you know several groups operating and potentially the Whitmore Lake School so I think there could be some value just beyond what the Planning Commission might want to know although it could get kind of long so it would take some looking at that in coordination just to see if if it's uh, feasible but we don't have to mail to everybody that was the sixteen thousand dollar option um, it could just be a scientific scientifically selected um, group um, so that that would save some money too if that was an issue and and it could be uh, coming up uh, toward the end here we I see there's a capital improvement plan now the Board of Trustees had taken that on from the Planning Commission some years ago but unfortunately uh, not much of a capital improvement plan has happened since the uh, Planning Commission did it uh, years ago so um, we are kind of um, we have a lot of capital needs that have not been prioritized and that's something that that this board needs to decide what to do because uh, we are expending funds for things that the community wants but we need to do it wisely and we do have a lot of needs out there and with our buildings and everything so um, we may need some assistance as the board of trustees doing that if the board of trustees wants to keep that uh, job otherwise um, the Planning Commission has done it in the past <coughs> so I just want to highlight that um, even though the Planning Commission may not take that on um, we somebody's got to do it and we're gonna have to do it so uh, that's my feed feedback um, and perhaps um, mr. Roman and I and the planners can talk about some of these things uh, in the in the weeks coming up and see how we can coordinate better with the groups Anybody else? Ms. Chair. I was going to say, Marlon, uh, Supervisor Chalkley said exactly what I would have said, so thank you. Oh. I, I'll keep it short. I agree. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Dockett. I'd like to clear this up. I believe I was, I'm confused. I believe Mrs. Otto said that we didn't spend the $5,000 on Pontiac Trail. We definitely spent the $5,000 on Pontiac Trail, did we not? We, yep. we we spent the five thousand dollars, so I think you said. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I thought you said that we we did, but mm -hmm. we, we 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 did spend the five thousand dollars for nothing. I voted no on it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, we need to move. Um, are we good? Okay. We need to move on to the next item. I'm going to call. Uh, well. Can we call a break here for five minutes so everybody who's too hot or tired and wants to leave feel free but we'll start up in five minutes again and we'll get through the agenda for the rest of the meeting can I say you excused us yep you're excused I don't know what I would do without you guys. <laughs> I know, that's 
He's always like a laser like. No, but it's just great. The writing is in. Who does your writing? Is it that? I can't remember her name at the moment. Um, she signs everything. Just, what, I can't remember her name. Does she do the writing? I mean, the writing is exceptional. Just for a long documentary from you for the planning commission are just. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't. The writing is it was you and Paul. Okay, yeah. I love it. Like, it makes me feel sane. Like, yeah, I can think of this. Boy, I do not envy anybody having to stay the rest of I know. Well, not for a... Well, we, we're going to see you on Thursday for our marathon. I am.
I'd like to call this meeting back to order, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I know you're, many of you are leaving. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yep. You can move down. Okay. So I'm calling this meeting back to order. We're gonna deal now with the Board of Trustees agenda items. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Larry? I'm Larry. Who's okay. Larry? I'll sit right here. Okay, come on up. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well hopefully this is going to be relatively quick. Okay, uh, the first item on the Board of Trustees agenda is um, to authorize uh, Chalk Supervisor Chalkley to sign the change order for the Whitmore Lake Road SAD. I will make a motion to authorize Supervisor Chalkley to sign this change order for the Whitmore Lake SAD. Okay, uh, so now we're open for discussion on this item. Uh, Mr. Dockett. How much is it for? Actually, uh, Mr. Rubel is here tonight, and, and we're actually getting money back. So the change order is uh, returning funds to us that were committed to this project. So, um, and since uh, Mr. Rubel sat through an extra hour of meeting, we'll just let him give us the good news. Mr. Rubel was late. He didn't get here in a few months ago. Mr. Rubel didn't, didn't need to come until... Uh, Okay. Tell he didn't need wrong. to come. But, but he didn't <laughs> sit through the meeting like we did. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Rubel. I cannot have a microphone. Oh, somebody, t oh, it's right at the end. <laughs> it's on? Okay. Yeah. I was looking for my notes. I had them when I walked in here. I was... Uh, <laughs> it was too quick I think I have them right here. So uh, okay. the project uh, wound down last fall, and we've been closing out some paperwork with the contractor. And this is a unit price contract, so uh, if they do the work uh, more efficiently, uh, we find a better way to do something than we bid it, uh, the contractor uh, invoices for, for less work, and vice versa if something more complicated comes up. Uh, it could have it could have gone uh, upwards, but uh, very pleased to report we had a very good contractor on the project. Things went very well, and Mr. Willis and Mr. Hardesty's staff uh, helped out where needed. And I think the net result was the contractor used thirty-seven thousand dollars less uh, than was authorized. So the the change order this is what we call balancing change order. We balance all of the units. Uh, is, a, is a deduct. So uh, <clears throat> the contractor is under budget, the engineer is under budget. Uh, we use very little of the contingency, and all that money gets returned to the uh, uh, property owners in the uh, assessment district. So, would you like to give us a figure? I'm sorry. Would you like to give us a figure that we're getting back? Right here. Would I like? There's thirty-seven thousand dollars. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I. Okay. That's what I ask. So, so you said that we we're going to give it back to the uh, property owners within the SAD. Now, is it given back to them as lump sum, or do we adjust their um, their payments? Yeah, I, I really need to get to have you get that opinion from Mr. Mann. Uh, that that's really beyond my area of expertise. So. I, I do know that is passed on to the property owners, but the exact mechanism and when that occurs is, is beyond my, my skill set. Okay, great. Do we have any more questions or comments about this item? Okay, I'm going to let Ms. Chick restate the motion and um, find okay. out who seconded it. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to approve the change order for the Whitmore Lake Sanitary Sewer Extension and to authorize the supervisor to sign the change order and to approve the application for payment. Okay. And who seconded that? Uh, Ms. Otto. Can we, can we okay. put the number in there? 
I mean, can you put the number in there that we're the changing? Thirty-six thousand seven hundred and sixty-three okay. dollars and eight cents. Okay. Okay. That's a good idea. Okay. I'm um, including the amount of thirty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars and eight cents. Okay. Reduction. Okay. So we have a motion by Chick and support by Otto. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's, That's good. Okay. Now the next item on the agenda is also you. So, um, <coughs> this is. Um, the sewer system interceptor flow monitoring proposal. And I would like a motion to accept the proposal from Tetra Tech dated 322.17 for interceptor flow monitoring in an amount not to exceed $34,800 uh, without prior written approval and authorization for the supervisor to sign the proposal document. So that's a motion by Chalkley and support by? I got them. Um, I'd like to. I need a second okay. first. I'll, I'll support. Okay. Chalkley, support by Chick. Okay, now we have discussion. Okay, Ms. Belliger. Is this regarding um, the proposal to do flow mon monitoring? Okay, yes. I, I think it would probably be in our interest to probably entertain uh, additional, um, uh, you know, additional bids mm -hmm. from other possible engineering firms and so forth just for the sake of it being in the interest of the township and the interest of the taxpayers and so forth. Okay. Um, I can answer that, and Mr. Rubel can answer that too. But do we have another um, comment here from any of the trust, Mr. Dockett? I would say that we should have another bid on this, also, because this is just a gimme, you know. And it's thirty-five thousand dollars. I don't think we should just hand this out to somebody. I, and you know, we've had uh, Rubel here for. I mean. You know, 60 years this company's been here. They've never been able to find out where all the water's coming from. Okay. I think we need an, a different contractor, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Dockett. Um, Ms. Manley. Just a quick question. I see in here that we can get 90% grant, 10% match. Yes. And has that application already been sent, or is it just completed? Yeah, the application was submitted in 2013. Okay. And the state is giving out $100 million per year, and they just, through a lottery, assigned a ranking. And uh, they have given out four waves of funding. The, the fifth wave is expecting this fall. I looked at the list. You narrowly missed last year's uh, award, so you're right at the top of the list for this next wave. Okay. So you've submitted it. I expect the award in October or November. Mm -hmm. okay. And it, is, it can be retroactive, so any eligible work since 2013 can be reimbursed when that funding comes. Mm -hmm. Okay. More questions? Just to follow up on how much is the award do you expect it to be? Five, $595,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So it will include many things beyond flow monitoring. It'll, it'll mm -hmm. include computer modeling. Um, I think I heard you talk about capital improvement plans mm -hmm. a little while ago. So this would also <coughs> assist in developing a capital improvement plan for your sewer and your wastewater uh, mm -hmm. system as well. Mm -hmm. It would include some software uh, that would help uh, manage the, the maintenance activities and cleaning, televising of sewers, the list mm -hmm. goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great deal of yes. money. Um, and we'll let, go ahead, Mr. Willis. Um, the SAW grant will reimburse us for a lot of work we've already done, too. Mm -hmm. We've been working on this for at least four years and um, mm -hmm. towards this end. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, Mr. Hardesty has been tracking all of the hours that, um, and, the t and the materials that have been put into the project so far, and so we won't necessarily have to contribute any funds. We'll just get the money to be able to improve our uh, wastewater treatment program. And um, that's going to be really critical it, when we're looking at the community park. And if we want any significant development anywhere in the township, we really have to do some improvements in our wastewater treatment plan. I mean, 
um, plant. So uh, this will be very critical to that. And the, the critical portion of it right now is that this flow monitoring needs to happen in the spring when the rains come. And um, Mr. Rubel told me that they could get the monitors in place in a, probably about 10 days or so. Plus or minus a few days, but yeah, that, that would be the goal. Right, and then it'll be in place for three months to make sure that they get good data. So it, you know, we're, we're not bidding this out. This is, you know, Mr. Um, Rubel has put this, this grant proposal together to the state. I don't think it's important at this point. We're getting 90% of it back and, um, and we're, we're under a, a time deadline here. So um, we need to get this going right now so that we can do something for the community into the future. Um, Ms. Bellager. Um, this grant, it is, is it dependent only upon uh, Tetra Tech? Or this grant could be utilized to any engineering Anybody. firm? And That's there right. is no reason that we cannot um, still bid it out and have people, if we agree with what they want to, if we agree with the bid and we, uh, with the, going with a different engineering firm or maybe even this engineering firm, there's no reason they can't hustle after we approve. It doesn't, just because we're kind of in a hurry doesn't mean that we should deny the, the right thing, which is to actually get some competitive bidding, which is, should be done with any project, not just this project, but any project going forward. Ms. Otto. So um, I think a while back when we, um, when we engaged uh, competitive bidding for our engineering, uh, we did have several different engineers that came in that provided pricing uh, services and everything, and Tetra Tech was still um, the best price for what we get for our value. We determined it at that time that they would continue to be our engineering firm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really what you need to address is are we, do we have a trust in the engineering firm that we have today? Um, we're hiring them to do something for us that none of the board uh, has expertise on. Um, I have talked to another engineering firm um, and they said, they did tell me that they would go in the same direction that Tetra Tech is telling us to go in. Um, and they're just as reputable as Tetra Tech, and they were one of them that went out to bid that we um, did not go with because they were a higher price. So mm -hmm. I, that's where I stand in, in regards to going out to bid. I think it's more of a timing issue here mm -hmm. uh, because it is spring <laughs> and mm -hmm. we can't stop the weather. Mm -hmm. I agree. I make a comment, uh, Ms. Chick. I just want to add <clears throat> also too. There is value in having someone working in, with the township that knows the township. They, I mean, they know every single detail of our sewer system, what it needs, uh, where it needs improvements, and um, how to get that and, and, and at a fair price. So I per, I personally appreciate everything that Tetra Tech has done over the years that they've served us and. Um, if someone new came in, they'd have to start from scratch, learn it all over, mm -hmm. and that's time consuming. Mm -hmm. And costly. And costly, costly. yeah. Um, Mr. Zelnock. Um, Mr. Willis, wh what's your thought as far as on bidding? Do we typically, or do um, sewer plants typically bid individual products, projects, or is it you, ex you, know, you have an engineering firm like Tetra Tech, Tech, Tetra Tech and so going forward, you know, projects that come up, they do the projects, and then as a whole, you go out and bid when you want to um, get a new engine. For I'm not too familiar with the other communities, but I, I, I think most of them have a engineering firm they stick with for most of their projects. Okay. Um, we bid out the Seven Mile project, the sewer on Seven Mile, and currently we're we got a project going on the end of Seven Mile that we're trying to get information from from that engineering firm, and they have none. So that set us back on that project mm -hmm. to go forward with that mm -hmm. too, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and right. Ms. Sato, do you remember when the engineering firm went out, we went out for bid for the sewer, you know, to do, keep Tetra Tech, do you remember when that happened? Oh, how was this it, was, it was when I was in office, so um, it was a couple okay. of years ago. All right, okay. Thank right. you. Um, go ahead, Ms. Bellager, and we'll take a vote. 
I did, it just uh, I want to return to the um, it's it's good to have some competition it keeps everybody honest keeps everybody uh, you know on the up and up and this is very important and you know we have somebody that we really do like but it's good to keep them honest and it is you know it's just the right it's just a fair thing to do is to offer other people the opportunity even mm -hmm. so this is why I, I think it would be good to suggest the competitive bidding option okay. thanks <clears throat> Mr. Dockett. We'll never know unless we try to get another bid. So uh, I, I am just definitely against this. We need to contact somebody that can tell us about how all this rainwater or storm sewer water or storm water is getting into our sewer. Just think about this. Uh, he wants to build a $3 million tank to put all this rainwater in, and then he wants us to buy all this chemical to draw it back out, clean it up, put it in the creek. Why don't we find out where it's coming from? That's, that's where I think we need to have okay. a contractor go. Thank you, Mr. Duckett. Um, I know they've been televising the lines to make sure that they seal any cracks that are in there. The system is very old. Um, it can so be fixed. Maybe uh, parts of it, little bits of it. Well, um, if we don't try, we don't yeah. Know. Mr. Rubel told me a story about what was it? Howell? No, Dundee. It was Dundee. Yes, they got five hundred thousand well, dollars to do this. Yeah, I mean, sure, you can study the system and, and find all of the cracks and leaks and and develop a plan to fix them all. Absolutely, you can do that. Um, I, I, Ms. Shockley is referring to uh, Village of Dundee, who we helped do that exact. Uh, service. Um, it took well over half a million dollars of study t to do that, and the end result was that it made sense to remove about 10% of the water. And, and by sense means it was cheaper to, to fix it, and we removed about 10% of the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can do it. They had a grant to go through that, that process, mm -hmm. so right. you can okay. do that. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Um, which I can read again. Um, I just have one more question. So these right. are the ones, the main three. Are there any other ones that we should be um, flow monitoring? Well, we, we, we could take it, uh, you know, down to very small areas if we wanted to. My, my suggestion is these three would answer some pretty big questions that you have right now on, on, on big trunks and, and those that are uh, subject to potentially some uh, development or new connections and then you have the, the grant money coming and we could do more flow monitoring than after you actually have those funds in hand that that would be my suggestion okay did, thank you did, did that answer your question yes thank you is this something new miss belger um, um yeah the, okay. it's it um a little bit back to docket made a point about is is this going to be a possibility that we maybe if we're going to do this flow monitoring checking, can we hit the lines in such a manner, can we monitor the lines in such a manner that we can determine where these rainwater issue areas are that maybe there could be some repairs that would save us a lot of money and maybe postpone at a large expense by doing the repairs? Could we, if you only talk about doing three of these monitoring, is there perhaps something elsewise we should do to see what about the rainwater issue those studies yes there's lots of things to do the flow monitoring is usually the first step and then you divide the system into smaller pieces so you know you can prioritize the areas uh, then once you prioritize it then you do other studies you do more televising um, mm -hmm. insert a tv camera in there uh, you can insert smoke in there uh, and the, and the smoke rises to the surface, and where you, where you see the smoke rising out of the ground, you can infer that the rainwater gets in the opposite pathway. Um, <clears throat> all, all of that costs money. So I, I would suggest you start small with the flow monitoring this spring, and when you get the grant, you'll have more money to put into the, the monitoring and, and subdividing the area. Okay. That's, that's just my suggestion. You could do more now if you wish. Just Okay. Do we need a repeat? Uh, I'm going to repeat the motion. Um, I move to accept the proposal from Tetra Tech dated two, tw I mean three twenty two seventeen for interceptor flow monitoring 
in an amount not to exceed $34,800 without prior written approval and uh, to authorize the supervisor to sign the proposal document. Um, all in favor say aye. No, I, I, want, I want us to each vote. Okay, roll call vote, please. Otto. Aye, yes. Chockley. Yes. Chick. Yes. Manley, yes. Zelenak. Yes. Dockett. No. Bellager. No. Okay, motion passes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is. Um, why did you pick out, why did you start here and go here and then call us to last? I just wrote down a list earlier this uh, afternoon. Uh, uh, sounds kind of fishy to me. Okay, the next uh, the next item is uh, for the recommendation uh, from wastewater treatment plant superintendent Dan Willis to promote Mike Spurl to system supervisor. Um, I'll make the motion to promote Mike Spurl to the position of system supervisor with a base pay of forty five thousand dollars as recommended by Dan Willis wastewater treatment plant. Superintendent. I support. Okay, motion by Chalkley, support by Bellager. Do we have any um, discussion? Mr. Dockett. I am happy to see Mike Spurl get a promotion. I guess it's a promotion. Uh, and uh, I will be voting yes on this. And I voted for him when we, along with other board members here, when we hired him a few years ago. Thank you. Okay, any more discussion? Okay, we had the motion by Chalkley, support by Belger. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, okay. Um, the next item is a um, motion to authorize the acceptance of the two outstanding easements for the non-motorized path if our offers are accepted. Did we skip, we skip one? Did we skip, Did we skip one? one? Yeah. Update, yeah. On, the update on the controller. Oh, you're update. right. You're right. Then we will go back to the update. I don't see the one she's on now. Yeah, it was added, Mr. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Ms. Elnock, if you'd like to speak to that. Sure, I can speak to this. Um, we've posted, we've had um, interviews. We've had four candidates. Um, after we interviewed them, three of them um, declined just for own personal reasons. We have one that's still outstanding. You know, our one concern is is that basically he has three other jobs, so we don't know how much he could dedicate to our um, township and the hours that he would be in there. So we think we need to, and we have already reposted, to get a broader selection of candidates um, to continue forward. Um, Rick has been very generous with his time. He has been coming in on Saturdays to keep the bank wrecks as well as other duties that he's performed. I have reached out. Um, to John Pfeffer to see if he could help us and he did come up with a couple people that he thought might actually want a full part-time full-time position but it turns out that they would be able to help us just in the interim so we're concerned just in general continuing to use Rick and you know him coming in and giving up his Saturdays so we'd like the flexibility that if need be that we'd be able to go out and hire an interim part-time person to fill in until we can get the full-time controller. So, so, <coughs> so I, if we need a motion. Oh, oh say, was, is, did you want to vote on that now or is that for the yeah. next agenda? Oh, no. um, I mean, uh, we'd like to have the flexibility if need be again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'd like to have that. Yeah. Just again, Rick has been very generous with his time and I gotta believe, you know, um, we just like to again have the flexibility. So I would just make a motion that um, we, the board, authorize to hire a temporary controller if it is deemed necessary before a permanent part time controller can be hired. I'll support. Okay. A motion by Zelnock, support by Chick. Mr. Dockett. Do you have a part time person in mind? Um, we did get uh, um, two people recommended by, again, our auditors. That one is um, Judy Paul, and she was a treasurer here. Um, I don't know if you remember her. You may. Well, who was it? Judy Paul. No. I'm and sorry. And then Mike Rickett. Um, oh, okay. I just wondered if you had somebody in mind. Well, they could be two potentials, ones that come highly recommended. Okay. 
So um, Thank just you. as, again, just as a backup plan, hopefully. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So we have the motion by Ms. Zelnock and support by Ms. Chick. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that passes. All right, the last one then. Um, make a motion to authorize the acceptance of the two outstanding easements for the non-motorized path if our offers are accepted. And I don't have, um, I don't have information yet that they will be. Um, so, um, but we need to move forward uh, with the construction and if that should come, if they should materialize in the next two weeks, uh, it'd be nice to be able to take take that to the next step and get the uh, construction going, so. Um, um, didn't we do this at the last meeting, no? Yeah, and that's the thing. It, I thought we, we were did it. I was authorized to offer, but I wasn't authorized, we weren't authorized okay. to accept. It's, so it's like two different okay. things. Got it. And so a little technicality that maybe? That was a complication. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank I'll you. support. Okay. So a motion by Chalkley and support by Ms. Otto. All in favor say aye. Uh -uh. Aye. Uh -oh. Discussion. discussion. All right, discussion, Mr. Dockett. How much money are we talking about? I'd like, uh, to, I'd like to see the figure here. Okay, we authorized $17,000 for Mr. Stojanovic and $16,500 for Mr. Um, Westrick, Westrate. So that is that 33000 Yes, it is. 500. This was in the packet um, from our last meeting. Oh, well, yeah, it's not here. Yeah, no. last meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, thank you. I'd like to have a roll call vote. Right. Roll call vote. Bellager. No. Otto. Yes. Zelenak. No. Chick. Yes. Docket. No. Manley. Yes. Chalkley. Yes. Passes. Okay. Next item is the second call to the public. Um, would anyone like to come and share anything with us tonight at this late hour? Welcome. Um, my name is Andy Lucatis. Hi. Can, can you talk into the mic, please? Mm -hmm. And what, what's, your, what's your address, Mr. Lakatis? Push it all the way up. Am I on? Oh, yeah. there we go. Okay. Uh, 9249 Lakewood Drive over in Wildwood Lake subdivision. And uh, the biggest part of the sidewalk uh, impacts our property because we already have a sidewalk there. Now we know that you're going to make it bigger, so that's not a big issue. Uh, the biggest thing that I look at is, um, and I talked with with um, uh, Brian, Brian. Uh, Regal or Rubel. He Rubel? was just here. Yes, but Where's now he he's at? gone. <laughs> he left. Oh, did he leave? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was quite hoping to meet him. At any rate, he, uh, he, he, he called me today to let me know that in about mid-April you're going to be starting the project. Mm -hmm. So I really hope you got those easements in place before the, the word gets out that they're going to start that project because you will not get that easements for those prices. So get them lined up quick mm -hmm. because we at Wildwood would really love to have that sidewalk. But the other side of the coin is we had the big sprinkler system that sits over there. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have a sidebar to talk about that. Um, okay. because he made the indication that there isn't any money to replace that system. Whether or not that, that's not going to impact the sidewalk as far as we're concerned, mm -hmm. but it is a concern for us. Um, so that's about all I have to say there. Uh, just that uh, good luck, get that thing taken care of, because the word gets out that it's going to start, you, you know, you need to get those things done. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, would anyone else like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing no one, uh, board member comments. Um, uh, we'll start with Mr. Dockett. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'd like to uh, 
tell her that when they should use uh, local services if they can buy buy yeah, local. Right. And oop, am I on? Uh, uh, shop locally, support our local people, and uh, happy April Fool's Day. It's coming up Monday. That's it. Thank you. Okay, Miss Otto. Um, Andy, I was just ask, I was wanted to ask you, did you provide a layout or a mapping of the sprinkler system? Uh, I only moved here two and a half years ago, mm. so I have no knowledge of what it looks like, nor does this company that's doing our mm -hmm. you know, the monitoring and the year. Yeah. So Yeah. What did you ask him? I mentioned to him. I mentioned to him that that we would that we would uh, I, I would get uh, the sprinkler system, uh, Daily Rain, who does our work for us right now, and for them come back out and review it. We know where the heads are, but there may be a, his educated guess. He might be able to tell us where the line, the main line might be, um, but we don't know. And yep. we probably won't know until he gets torn up. And it's mm -hmm. going to be what it's going to be, all right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. don't panic. We're not going to sue you. Okay. No, but they can be easily moved if, if they knew the lineup and everything. Uh, that would be, tr that's possible, yes, yeah. but we don't okay. know where any of that okay. stuff is, okay? We know where some okay. of the valves are, but that's all. Okay, we can talk about this offline. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're not far down. Okay, thank you. Oops. Okay, um, Miss Bellager. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, I want to say I had a wonderful tour of the wastewater treatment plant last week, and uh, Dan and, and Tim. It was uh, really awesome. It's an outstanding facility, and I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Spear, Spiral, Spiral for his uh, his uh, his um, well his promotion. And um, see, uh, as Wayne said, support local business, please, mm -hmm. please, please, please. And uh, I want to ask or remind, you know, this, we talk about grant money an awful lot around here, and grant money isn't money that materializes out of thin air. It comes out of taxpayers' pockets. And so very often this word grant, and oh, we can get a grant, we'll get a grant, we have one coming, or we can sign up for one. It's, it's theft is what it is. It's redistribution of money. Um, I don't know how much we can do about it. Ultimately, what needs to happen is grants need to be cut at the root. In other words, they need to take less money out of us so we can keep it and then spend it as we want, as opposed to them taxing the daylights out of us and then telling us how we can spend it. So that's the thing regarding grants. And um, on those uh, surveys, if we do a physical survey and whatnot, it would probably be a good idea to um, survey those that are on the tax roll or a percentage of people that are on the tax roll, the taxpayers, because we are using taxpayer money, ultimately. Thanks, and thank you, everybody, for a wonderful uh, meeting tonight. And take care. Ms. Elnock? Yeah, I just, um, unfortunately, the Planning Commission and the Downtown Development Group is not here, but I wanted to thank them for coming and sharing the plan with us and all the hard work they have done on it. I think if we can combine um, development there, um, help pay for some of the amenities in the park so mm -hmm. and boost our downtown miss manley just quickly basically the same thing lenore said you know thank you to downtown planning group dda planning commission mm -hmm. everybody pulling together and you know working together to you know reach the same goal mm -hmm. thank you miss mm -hmm. chick on the planning commission note i just wanted to invite everybody who's interested there is a planning commission training coming up uh, Thursday night here mm -hmm. at the Public Safety Building at um, 6 o'clock. Yeah, 6, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yep, so it would be interesting for people who want to learn a little bit or understand exactly what we're doing. And I did have one comment or to make. Um, there was a question about how this board or any board, um, the process for coming to a decision. I I've thought about it since I was asked a couple of weeks ago, and, and my only uh, comment is, is that 
these board members and every other board member come to their decisions the same way every other board previous to us did. Um, and we, we read the packets, we do our own research, we listen to the residents, we listen to the experts, and we make decisions based on the compilation of all the information and comments. So I'm not sure what other kind of process there is that we could put into place that would make it any different. We, um, we do discuss things, and if we happen to agree on everything, hooray. Um, we don't have to debate everything if we're in agreement. So mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that question, I guess, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I would have liked to thank all the people that have put so much time into all of our committees. And it's really important that we get a wide variety of people contributing to the community. And it, it makes us stronger. And um, I'm very appreciative of the downtown planning group. Uh, they were kind of a new, a new entity. And uh, now they're going to be working closely with the downtown development authority. And that's uh, great. Um, they, the Downtown Development Authority was very receptive when, when I went and asked for funding for the downtown plan, um, and, uh, which is great because, you know, our budget's tight. So um, I very much appreciate that, and um, I wish you all a good evening. Motion to adjourn. So move. Support. All in favor, say aye. <laughs> and it's before 10 o'clock. Amen.